Hello, hello, hello. Ooh, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, Michael, Cat, Daisy, and Durable. Hello. Welcome to my eyes not working properly. Uh, I guess it's just me being tired. Oh, but I really, I, I just can't see properly. Ah. Uh. Hello. And welcome. To a continuation of some sorts. Sort of. Because we're going back to Tax Murphy. Did I cry? Uh, not today. <laughs> no, it's just tired, I guess. I mean, that's the whole <coughs> problem with me right now. But yeah, anyway, we're going back to Tax Murphy. Sleepstream. <laughs> Um, a little while back we played, um, shut up, we played, um, Under a Killing Moon, which is technically the third game in the series. Um, and for those who don't remember, we basically play a... Detective in the year 2040 something. So somewhat in the future where there's this weird disbalance between rich normal people and so-called mutants uh, who live somewhat more in, in the more and more run down area of the city. And even though Tex uh, is not a mutant. Um, he sympathizes more with the mutants than with the normal people, quote-unquote. Um, and we basically went on a mystery with, like, uh, uncovering a cult that basically wanted to pull some elites out of the world and then just kill everyone on the world and start a new, a new beginning with all the selected people, basically. But we prevented that, and yeah... That's who we are. Um, now, considering there are actually two more games between that game and the one we're going to play right now, there is a little bit of a story gap. Um, but from what I remember, this game actually gives you little tidbits of the previous games in order to get up the speed, basically. Like, it's not going to tell you the entire grand scheme of all the five games, but it, it, it gives you a little bit of info that you need. <clears throat> um, the only thing I will say, and I already told you guys that at the end of the previous uh, playthrough of the previous game, is basically where the story ended on a cliffhanger. Where we finally, as Tex, went on a date with uh, Chelsea, the woman from the newsstand. Uh, who we definitely got the hots for. And she turned out to have the hots for us as well, eventually. And we went on a date. Uh, but then we basically got kidnapped. And that's the cliffhanger of the old games. And it's this game came out... 16 years later, something like that. And this game is basically going to fill in a little bit of the gap. You'll, you'll see, you'll see. You'll see. We'll, we'll just boot up the game and I'll, I'll show you guys what, what we're talking about, actually.
Now this is still very much a, uh, a very cheesy um, FMV game as the previous game was, which is awesome. And it also gonna, is going to help me because I don't have to talk as much. Um, now there are basically two ways you can play, casual and gamer. Casual means you um, can use your flashlight uh, on, op on objects and if the object sparkles then it isn't interactable. Which makes it a little bit easier to find stuff. Um, you can access the hint system and you can even skip some puzzles through the menu. Now all of this is still optional, you don't have to use this. Or you could go with gamer mode and then none of the hints are, are there for you to find. I'm gonna leave it on casual. Just in case we need it. I'm not gonna whip out my flashlight every time I don't know what to do. But it is it is at least good to have the option there in case we need it. Because I, I already played this game before. <coughs> and there are one or two moments in the game where it might be useful to have the flashlight. But we'll get there when we get there. So let's, uh, let's start. Where am I? Is this a dream? Not quite, Murphy. Then you're the, the big P.I. in the sky? That's right, Murphy. But now is not the time for you to be here. There is a vast and malignant evil at work on And yes, that is Fate again James Earl Jones' voice. Fathom, has chosen you to oppose it. But why me? I'm no more thrilled about it than you are. Nevertheless, your fate has been decided. And this was kind of a similar opening to the game we played before, Under a Killing Moon. Now, because this is a much more modern game, it came out in... 2014 I want to say um, the quality like the video quality of uh, the FMVs is gonna be a lot better of course the UI and you know the game controls overall are gonna be a lot better um, the, the graphics are not gonna be great like it's still an quote-unquote indie game um, but the cheesiness of the FMVs is definitely still here. It maybe loses a little bit of its charm because it all looks a little better. <coughs> but... <clears throat> at least... Um, it's still glorious in how cheesy it is. And <clears throat> the um, oh well, let's first do the opening cut. Tex Murphy. I'm a small-time private investigator in the big city of New San Francisco. And my office isn't in the glamour districts. It's in the rundown, mutant part of the city, close to Coy Tower, a place they've been refurbishing for years, but it never seems to improve. Not exactly great for business. But it holds a strange attraction for me. I've cracked some pretty big cases over the years. You may even have heard of me. But I don't do much investigating anymore. These days, I'm known for being a man who gets things done, no matter what the cost. You got a job that pays? I'll do it. No questions asked. I can't really remember why I became a PI. Maybe I was drawn to the romance, adventure, and independence it offered. Or maybe because I believed in its code of honor. That a man can remain untarnished as others sink into a cesspool of lies, corruption, and greed. A man better than the world around him. 
As you can see, it already looks a lot better than what we had before. Still a little janky here and there, but it looks good. set of principles can slowly slip from your grasp. The world has a way of beating you into submission. Circumstances change. The guilty aren't always punished. Temptations become obsessions, and love can be violently taken, leaving it empty and hollow. Each day, innocence fades, and your character weakens. And that's not all at once, but a piece at a time until you can't be put back together again. You finally realize the only way to get ahead in this world is to make sure you're on the winning side and then do anything you can to stay alive. I don't know why I'm so reflective tonight. Maybe I finally crossed the Rubicon, but that's not true either. I passed that sign miles back and didn't even pause to take a picture. Maybe I just feel extra guilty tonight for what I'm about to do. never agreed to do something this despicable. I can't explain why I do this, but maybe Judas would understand. Hello, Tinas. I don't care. Drag him into the speeder. Look, look, look. The top window. I think we got him. Let's get out of here. You over here. <sighs> Finally, what was all that commotion outside anyway? Howza, you really got a hit on the head. Remember me, your old pal Huck? Seriously, you look clueless. Uh, who or what are you? Geez, how hard did you hit your head? Well, let me reintroduce myself. I'm your smart Alex, your personal assistant, version 1.5, fashioned three years ago in a factory with truly horrible working conditions. <laughs> you don't want to know. I'm your trusty tech-savvy sidekick, whose primary functions include travel agent, inventory tracking and analysis, investigative advice, case notes, and I'm also a confidant and a best buddy, you gigantic oaf. Remember? Not really. Would you like a tutorial on my usage? Uh, we'll take the tutorial. And yes, hi, Tinas. Um, yes, this game is CGI, but the people in the game are very much live action. So, yeah. Activating tutorial mode. Let's begin. Welcome to the Smart Alex interface. This is where the magic happens. This button takes you to your inventory. Items you pick up along the way can be viewed and used from here. To take a closer look at an item, select it and then click the examine icon. The examine feature often gives clues about the object. Okay. This is your map, where you can view your current location or warp to other locales. Okay. 
This icon is our handy dandy built-in hint system. It will list tasks for each location. This is your flashlight. If you are in a particularly dark environment, you can turn on this flashlight to help you out. If you're playing in casual mode, when the beam of light from the flashlight shines on an object that needs to be picked up, the object will sparkle. This is the look icon. If you want to look at an object without interacting with it, press this icon. Yeah, more furniture I don't recognize. The use icon allows you to interact with an object in the environment. The Smart Alex icon will flash in the corner, confirming an item has been picked up and placed in the inventory. To exit out of the Smart Alex game interface, click on the giant X in the middle. Let's start by picking up an item to add to the inventory. Walk over to the corner shelf and pick up the broken record. This is very much a video. I'm not doing anything. Entry records broken in two. Now let's take a look at this new addition in your inventory. Return to the Smart Alex interface and click on the inventory icon. Look, the broken record. Examine the broken record to hear a clue about what to do with it. I'll need some glue to repair this broken record. Exit your inventory by clicking the X in the upper right corner. Now let's try picking up another inventory item. Navigate to the desk and pick up the bottle of glue. Huh, it's a bottle of stupid glue. Now open your inventory again. You now have both the broken record and the bottle of glue. Let's try combining your two inventory items. Select the broken record and drag it to one of the combination slots below. Hello, lady. Now, select the glue and drag it to the other combination slot. I'm experiencing a sensation altogether new to me, and frankly, I love it. Success! You have now created a vinyl record. Well, I definitely remember my Gene Autry record. It's my one stability in this crazy world. Try using the vinyl record on your Victrola player. This is the office. tutorial video, so we really icon. just started. Point at the target, open the inventory, select an item, and then press the use icon. I close my eyes ah, Gene Autry, the singing cowboy. Nice choice of music. One more thing. To access the pause menu, simply hit escape. From here, you can save your game, access the main menu, explore the help section, or quit the game. Yep, that's all there is to it. Now let's get back to your actual case. You have a fax. You have a fax. Okay. So here we actually start. Now what I would still wanted to say is the cliffhanger. Um back in the old game, the the, the final old game was that we that you and Texan Chelsea got kidnapped. And all of a sudden we're here. Don't worry, the game will actually explain to us a little bit how we got here a, a little later on. Uh, wait, hold on. Salsa dancing is a Murphy family tradition. What on earth is this amount of cash doing in my office? If someone was trying to hire me to do something, it probably wasn't legal. I better put this away until I know exactly why it's here. If I need to change the volumes around, please tell me. On Saturday nights, I push the furniture to the walls and cut loose on the dance floor. You have a fax. Well, it's another Mike and I camera candy fax. comic, Key Lime Largo. I'll put this in my comic book rack. Uh, wait, is this... Yeah, no detective worth his salt would be without a fax machine. Okay, uh, we are definitely gonna, um, visit some old locations. That's why I'm kind of surprised the fax is here, because the fax used to be back there in the corner, so... Oh boy, a fax. We have a... This is inventory, a fax. It's a note from my old friend Archie Ellis. Apparently he's out of town doing some research. When he returns, I'll need to ask him about the case we're working on. Okay. Uh. My friend Louie runs the Brew and Stew, and this is his personal brand of coffee. I gotta say, it packs a wallop. Can I not... I see my credenza is still keeping dust off the floor. <laughs> Inside joke if you know the older game. Yeah, it's a picture of pre-World War III San Francisco. Well, that's new. That is new, yes. When things get slow in the detective business, I've always been able to fall back on my skills as a dance instructor. 
When things get slow in the detective oh, okay. business... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, more furniture I don't recognize. Yeah, me neither. There used to be like a stretcher bed right there. Not a couch here. And a closet space got a whole lot bigger. Holy... Wait, what? This used to be just a closet space. Now it's an entire room? Hold on, then. let's explore this room first. Ah, my old trusty Victrola still seems the same. Plays my 78s. Oh, man. My Richie Haven's signature guitar signature disappeared. That'll teach me to get an autograph with a dry erase marker. Hardy har. This is where I keep my knickknacks and patty wax. Oh, man, this record's broken in two. How do we actually do Ooh, always useful. the thing we saw in the tutorial? I'm experiencing a sensation altogether new to me. Um. Wait, but how do I now use? Oh, okay, like that. I close my eyes okay, fair. Maltese Falcon. I remember picking up this little souvenir. How long was I knocked out? I'm gonna bump the voice a little bit. I turn it down just to. Mix and match the audios a little bit, but it's my Gene Autry fake book. Whenever I'm feeling low, I can sing the songs of my hero. I think that's a little better. Sometimes I wish I had a talking gumball machine as my wacky sidekick. <laughs> sure. Uh, nothing. 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 I sure don't remember how these holes got in the wall. They look fairly recent, judging from the debris. Who would have done this? And why? I don't know. These are the fedoras I've collected over the years, and I take great care of them. Hey, one of these has a hole in it. How did that happen? Yep, here we go. Old trusty sidearm. Been with me since the beginning. You want some of this, huh? Bam, bam! Hey, bam, bam, bam! Bam! Bam, bam! Bam! And you! Hey! Hey, Sonny, can you help me out? My girlfriend threw my gun out of the window. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, just pick it up and, uh... Hey, don't... Don't point that thing up here. That's not a toy, you know! Oh, my hell. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. Now the game is going to do that a little bit more where they actually are going <coughs> to show us some cutscenes out of the older games. This is not a game filled to the brim with just references to the older games. This is very much its own thing. But you get sometimes a little bit of a, of a, of a callback here and there and it's cute. It's cute. Hmm. No messages on the vid phone. Uh, can I? What is this? Whoa, this melted chocolate bar has been in here for a while. <laughs> chocolate always reminds me of Clint, one of the residents at Chandler Avenue. Clint? This isn't a good time for a social call, punk. If I don't get her fixed soon, I'll go insane! Dory me plus a lot to do! What do you mean, go insane? Seems to me you're already there. How do you get lost before I eat that chocolate colored hat of yours? <laughs> yep. We have to give him chocolate cake in order for him to help us. <laughs> uh, what is this? Oh, my decoder ring. The resort? Sounds like an upscale condo community. <laughs> Definitely not something I'm interested in. Okay. An article on the Russian white movement. Am I truly so bored I'm reading Russian history? I guess. This looks interesting. Probably a book on how to map out fun spots to visit inside your brain. <laughs> Enigma. <laughs> Sounds like the story of my life. The hearty horror. On Saturday nights, I push the furniture to the walls and hey. cut loose on the dance floor. <laughs> P.I. rules are for sissies. 
I've been able to achieve a certain level of success ignoring all the rules of my business. Mm, sorta. Um, Looks like somebody's wiped my computer clean. You're very casual about that, Tax, but okay. Ah, uh, the Colonel. He was my first real mentor in the PI business, and here he is giving me a helpful tip. Because apparently you never learned the first rule of a PI. And never, ever betray your friends. Now, friendship goes beyond blood and race and politics. You gotta find out who your friends are, then you hold on to them. I always get the chill of fear down my spine whenever I think of him. And you should, because he was a good character. A little bit of a dirty oddball, but... Archie Ellis wrote a book? I bet this sells for pennies on eBay. Uh, what is this? It's one of my business cards, but it looks different. When did I change these? Oh, look at that. They even used a picture, like the the title screen picture of the first game. Well, this happened on my first case. I was in the shootout of my life at the warehouse district. Yep, <laughs> this is actual gameplay of that first game. <laughs> you actually had these shooting sections, which are really bad, but... It was cute. I took a bullet, and while I was recovering, I swore I was always going to use my brains before brawn. Eh, yeah, cute. It's cute. I don't remember my office furniture being so nice. What happened? Yeah, what did happen? My indispensable water cooler still doesn't have paper cups. True. Um, okay, so let's actually explore the bedroom that we apparently now have here. I certainly don't remember this piece of furniture. Looks like a genuine antique instead of something I normally get at a white elephant sale. <laughs> yeah, I remember years ago, I was finishing up the latest Mike and Ike Candy Kids adventure, and I realized I devoured several chapters, and it wasn't agreeing with me. I could feel my stomach churning like a volcano, and I realized I wasn't going to make it to the bathroom. Oh, what the, it, I'll get you, Miffy, if he's the last thing I do. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of been a sore spot in our relationship ever since. We'll meet him later on. <laughs> yeah, not many people wake up from blackouts with new furniture. Uh, true. What's up with the bed? Looks like it's for a Lothario instead of some hardworking down on his luck PI. Am I going crazy here? And that's a genuine Ark of the Covenant footrest. I picked it up at a government warehouse sale years back. I've never had the nerve to open it all the way. Okay, that's cute. Picked it up at a government warehouse. Yeah, 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 you told us. This is where I store my trench coats. Whoa, I've never seen this much money in my life. If this is my money, what were they paying me for? Money? Oh, there's apparently money in the suitcase. Okay. Perfect. All I need is one good night stand. Uh, okay. Yeah, San Francisco looks way different now. Ah, that was for my first jackalope hunt. Someday, I hope to collect all of the Mike and Ike Hammer comics and place them here. Yeah, I believe these are like the collectibles in this game, where we can fill in this entire rack with these comics. Oh, I had this door permanently sealed as it opened directly into my bedroom. People thought that was awfully presumptuous of me. The door to my back storage room is locked. That's strange. Now we don't have the key? Um, well, let's get out of here because... Stuff changed and we don't know why. So, it wasn't a horrible dream. There are gun shell casings and a shot out window above the electronic shop. I know I'm involved, but how? I should investigate the area and then find out if anybody else heard the commotion. 
Now this is very much the same street from oh Chelsea's newsstand is completely abandoned. I need to find out what happened to Chelsea. Exactly, because last thing we know we were on a date. Now this is very much the street from the previous game. It looks a little different. Like there is actual space between the buildings and like the street has a slope. But it is definitely the same area. Um, what is this? That's an empty vial. Yeah, okay. What is this? Lead pipes are always magically drawn to my skull like moths to the flame. Huh? Back in the day, I always thought he was smacking him with a newspaper, because that's what it sounds like. <laughs> okay, so what the heck happened here? This photo was taken from the top floor of the electronics shop. Who's over there spying on me? Wait, hold on. Is that actually... Oh, yeah. Like, it's actually a picture of Tex going inside. Okay. Nice graffiti art. If you say so. Um... Where is he? He's up at the window. I think we got him. Someone was shooting from the top of the electronics shop. We heard that, all right. Um. He's injected himself. I don't care. Drag him into the speeder. I think someone was getting abducted. It's the Wardenclyffe Tower, a Nikola Tesla invention. I have the strangest feeling this is related to a case I was working on. Where's he shooting from? Look, look, look! The top window! Alright, just shut out our headlight. I remember speeder headlights coming down the alleyway. Mm hmm Okay, so they got away in a speeder. No one knows these back alleys at Chandler quite like me. Motor oil, the secret ingredient to Louis' Armageddon blend. Louis usually up at this time. I should ask him if he heard anything. It looks like the dumpster escaped unscathed. Um, now obviously we want to go to Luis, who is over there, that's our friend. Uh, but let's explore the outside area first. Because this is basically all new. What is this? Ah, Mike and Ike. Another Mike and Ike hammer. Candy cane confidential. These dumpsters have housed various individuals over the years. It's always nice to know I'll have a place to go if I can't make rent. Uh, hold on. Ah, uh, it's a Mike and I Hammer Candy comic, Citizen Candy Cane. The oh, hardy har. Ah, looks like Louie at the Bruin Stew is preparing to open up shop. You should go talk to him. Maybe he heard something. Yeah, thank you for the advice. I was already planning on that. Uh, it's a Mike and I Hammer Candy comic. The sweet and sour lady. I'll put this in my comic book rack back at the office. Okay, okay, okay. Let's explore a little bit more. Because they're probably. Yeah, another Mike and Ike. Are these just all outside here? Mike and Ike Hammer. Murder, my sweet. <laughs> and they are all just really bad puns. Or just jokes, whatever. Uh, what is this place? This became a highly sought after neighborhood post World War III when it was found that the radiation couldn't penetrate through all the lead paint. <laughs> ah, there we go. Another Mike and I camera candy comic. 
Tootsie rolled. <laughs> These names are just really bad and silly. Uh, can we just... Uh, we can just drop down, it's fine. Uh, Koi Tower? Koi Tower, once one of the great landmarks of the city, is now a broken down monument symbolizing the world that's passed us by. Can we go to the Koi Tower? Anything here? No. Just looking out for my Mike and Ikes. But so far... Nothing? Uh, what is this? My nose has started sagging lately. Yep. Makes it hard to breathe. Now, what kind of info are you looking for? Hmm? Hmm? Yep, these are all cutscenes from the previous game we played. Just little throwbacks. It's cute. Uh, now I have no idea what this is. Can we can we go up? Oh, we can. Where the heck are we going? Where are we even going? Well, we're going up quite tower, obviously, but. Why? Um, there's nothing here. Whoa, I wasn't always nervous about heights until my under a killing moon case. I was trying to break into a luxury high rise and slip from the 32nd floor. Yep. Yeah, we did. Looks like no one's home. This is going to be easier than falling off a horse. This window doesn't want to open up. Maybe if I... Whoa! Fortunately, I hit an awning before I hit the ground, but I didn't stop bouncing for about 30 minutes. Yup. And uh, now I'm going to do a quick save here. Because I want to try what happens if I jump down. Well, you're dead. Don't be sad. It's probably the most satisfying ending this case was ever going to have. <laughs> okay. Okay, but it does automatically put us back here. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's explore the street some more. Anything over here? No? Okay. Is there like a sprint button? Oh, there is actually. Okay, that, well, it's a slightly faster walk button, but sure. These dumpsters have housed various individuals over the year. Yeah, the Golden Gate Hotel was so famous they named a bridge after it. <laughs> Hardy har. Yep, that's the Snow White Warehouse. D d no shit. What is this? Mi hombre is takes. Um, it's like a swipe card reader. Okay. So we're going to get in here at some point. Yep, that's the Snow White Warehouse. Yeah. yeah needs a key. Okay. Uh, we cannot go past this place. This became a highly sought-after neighborhood post-World War III when it was found that the radiation couldn't penetrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah you told us. Um, now, this house is completely filled to the brim with all these pictures. 
I believe these are all like backers uh, when it came to this game, like backers on the project. And if I remember correctly, Tex actually has a remark, like a unique remark about all of them. This guy looks like that famous actor who was in all those movies. <laughs> he looks a little too young to be in here. Yeah. Um. Most likely to become an enforcer for the Mafia. Sure. Most likely to take over the world. <laughs> well, hello there. D oh, shut up. Family isn't just a thing. It's the only thing. I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. No. Uh, let's see. Do we have some more cute? That is easily in the top ten best mustaches I've ever seen. Yeah, sure. You know, the older I get, the younger everyone else seems to look. <laughs> True. I have the funniest feeling that this guy is pantsless. <laughs> uh, uh, most likely to be a U.S. senator. <laughs> okay. I don't trust that cat. Not one bit. As you should. Cats are not to be trusted. But yeah, like I said, there's a unique remark about all of them, which is kind of cute, actually. Like, if your picture is in here and, you know, Tex actually saying something unique about your I'm picture. I'm sure every one of your cases involves the Snow White warehouse somehow. Yeah, true. Um, Closed. Yeah, this building's been a lemon for anyone who's tried to open a business here. Mm -hmm. Rusty the Clown was one of our more infamous Chandler Avenue residents. He ended up in a vat of chemicals strong enough to melt titanium. Yep. Looks like Rusty's fun mass building has been converted into a Knights of the Templar clubhouse. Um, it's a three cards to midnight shop. A.K.A. Archie helped me out on my Pandora directive case where we met a charming fellow named Jackson Cross. I'm gonna do you the favor of a lifetime. I'm gonna let you walk. But if I catch you meddling in NSA affairs one more time, I'm going to put a bullet right in your eyeball. Is that clear? Get this puke head out of my office. I'll be watching you, Murphy. <laughs> there he <laughs> looks into the camera. Yeah, I this would have ended up in the Andes Mountains. Uh, yeah, but that was a cutscene from the fourth game, the one we haven't played and will not play. Um, Chelsea? Chelsea's newsstand is completely abandoned. We need to find out what happened to Chelsea. Yeah. Sad to say, many robots and cyborgs end up down here. They get hooked on old Chihuahua motor oil, and they stumble down here looking for a fix until their lights fade out. That's Rick's pawn shop. It's closed for now. It's closed. So is the electronic shop. It's an electronic shop now, but it once was a boarding house for some of San Francisco's most notorious smugglers and petty criminals. Um, this is the, the alleyway. Rook's pawn shop is a dirty, ugly alcove that reminds me a lot of Rook himself. Fair. And uh, this was where Clint. Wa These dumpsters have housed various individuals over the years. Uh, I remember the day I came back to my office and that grisly sight. Right. Why you know play the fourth game? Um, because it is... I tried for an hour to get Pug's head out of the water cooler, but it was no dice. The police showed up and thought about grilling me until they realized Pug was a mutant. And it was like they couldn't care less. I guess people are a little apprehensive about taking that bottle back for deposit. Because the fourth game um, is in the same style as the third game, aka very, very dated. Um, and the story isn't as interesting, and especially the gameplay is really stretched out and really cumbersome. Like, it's not worth it to go back unless you have the nostalgia for it, which I don't. Yeah, what is that? A broken zipline trolley? Too bad the zipline trolley is broken. It's missing a wheel. Okay. Yeah, it really is a pain. Like, I watched a long play on YouTube of it. 
And even that, I was like, it takes way too long to get through things and stuff like that. Uh, what's this? Well, that's the wheel for the trolley, isn't it? Yeah. I guess luck counts for something. Zipline trolley's repaired. Now we need to find the perfect place to zipline. Yeah, okay. Now the gate's locked. But when Rook gets to work, he'll unlock it. So I'll check back later. Fair. Um, can we go up here? Yeah, we can. This door's just painted on. <laughs> yep, it's still painted on. Yep. <laughs> As it was before. What the heck is that? I knew there was something creepy in there. Uh, let's leave that alone. Okay, I think we pretty much explored most of what is to explore here. Um, Inspector Burns finally opened his own barbecue joint. I bet it tastes just like arson in your mouth. I don't think that'll taste all that well. Uh, what do we have here? Now that's a handsome devil. Wait a minute. A rival PI. Oh man, how did this happen? No deed too dirty, no job unworthy, and always dirt cheap. 555 five, five, dirt bag. <laughs> okay. Oh. It's locked. I won't be able to enter without proper identification. So we are getting in here at some point. Is there a reason to go up here? Maybe? Because maybe the door can open? If that even is a door? No, it's nothing. Okay. Can I jump? Yeah, the no? city of old San Francisco hmm. picks up the trash once a year. I think we're getting close to our date. Oh, pfft. Right. Okay, so there's one little bit and then we'll go have a talk with Louie and actually get some story in here. And actually get some FMVs, which are the bread and butter of this game. Uh, it's the sewer to Chandler Avenue. And I never go in there unless I really, really have to. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, okay, let's have a chat with Louie, shall we? I'm here to see my pal Louie, but I see a pretty brunette at the counter. I have the feeling she recognizes me, but I have no idea who she is. Well, hello, stranger. Um... Pinch me, confused, or straight to the case. Uh, pinch me. This totally feels like a dream that has got to be the nicest thing you've ever said to me just for that I'm gonna get you some coffee uh, we don't know her uh, helpful Hank my way or metaphor or less uh, helpful Hank I can get it oh, I know how you like it <sighs> like your women follow liquor <laughs> um, what? Um, curious metaphor? Actually, I like my coffee. I like my heart. Black? Um, alcohol's magical effect? Oh, I can hold it all right. It's just when I drink it, I get really drunk really fast. <laughs> Is that blood? Ow. The owl? Oh, hush. Ah. They're not picking fights again. Okay, she clearly knows us, but we don't know her. Uh, little fantasy? Uh, I don't know what happened, but... You'd look pretty incredible in a nurse's outfit. <laughs> mm, you do, huh? You in the mood for a little role-playing? Who do you think you are? Mr. Tall, Blonde, and Bloodied. 
Um, turn tables? You seem to know who I am. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> I'm Taylor, and I'll be your nurse. I recommend two aspirin and lots and lots of bed rest. Maybe all afternoon long. I can get into that. Um, Deja vu or not? You know, it's so weird because it's almost like we already know each other. Now you're getting it. Now if I can just teach you to start calling me. Ah, oh, jeez, I'm late. I got a new extension at work. I'll send it to your smart Alex. Please, go see Dr. Donahue at the North Hill Clinic. Call me after and tell me what she says about that noggin of yours. See you, Uncle Louie. Uh, see you, Taylor. Uh, okay, so it's... Hello, Louie? Mr. Murphy. What are you doing here? Um, hello, my friend. Also, who was that? Um, buddy speak. Mr. Murphy. Come on, Louie. What happened to Moy? Yeah, Moy. Is there something I can do for you? Because if not, I got stuff to do in the back. Um, was it something I said? Why are you acting mad at me? Yeah. You know why. You drunk again? I told you, you ain't allowed in here. You've been drinking. Um. Clear as a bathroom mirror? What? <laughs> well, I don't feel drunk. I just, my brain's a little foggy. Well, yeah, you got bumped in the head. What happened to your head? I don't know. I woke up on the fire escape. I go into my apartment and everything is different. The street, Chelsea's newsstand, you. Everything is completely different. I mean, I don't know whether I'm tripping here or having a bad dream or something. What's the last thing you remember uh, before you woke up? Uh, I don't know, but something with Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea? What day do you think it is? No, hold on. What year do you think it is? <sighs> what year? Are you serious? It's 2043. Oh, jeez. Look at that calendar. Over there? On the fridge? 2050. What the hell's going on here? Last night, Chelsea and I went to the Golden Pagoda. I think the wording was uh, very, very attractive. And this is the cliffhanger where the old games ended on. Somebody has stolen our car. I mean, here I am. My speeder's stolen out here. I'm sitting on a great... God, that was hot! Oi! Uh, would you guys like a lift to the cop shop? No, we'll walk. He's really just trying to do us a favor. Chelsea, I'm getting a really bad feeling about this. It's like some sort of deja vu. The Fabergé World Tour Forty Four. The most exotic and exquisite... Yep, oi. Who's your mate? Oh, that's Tex. He's having a very bad day. That true, Tex? Oh, no. Everything's just going peachy. Well, things could get worse, huh? He shot me. He, he shot both of us. He shot me. There's nothing. Why isn't there anything? That's what I'm trying to tell you, Mike. It wasn't last night. It was seven years ago. What the hell is that? Looks like you got injected with something. Maybe that's what's messing with your head. Or maybe it's that goose egg. Either way, buddy, you gotta see a doctor. Uh, yeah, the North Hill Clinic. Or, wait, what happened to Chelsea? What about Chelsea? Where is she? I mean, is she okay? You said to never say nothing about her. Never again. Um, okay, the North Hill Clinic. Your niece, Taylor, she said something about a, a doctor at the North Hill Clinic? Ah, Kate Donahue. She's a friend of Taylor's. She's real good. 
I bet she could fix you up. Um, yeah, what is my relationship with Taylor? So, what about this woman, Taylor? I mean, she seems to know me pretty well. <laughs> that ain't none of my business, Mike. I never thought you was the right guy for her. But two adults can do what they want to do. Murph, you really need to see a doctor. You can't be driving in this condition. Tell you what, I'll call you a cab. I'll have them wait till you're ready to go. So we are in a relationship with Taylor. Um, okay. <coughs> so this is the staple of the Tex Murphy games where you get an entire list of stuff of I like things you can talk to people about and we're just gonna go down the entire list because all of them give a little bit of dialogue and it's just cheesy fun so let's talk about tax it sure is good to have the old mice back I don't want to get all mushy but I missed you mice cute uh the abduction we don't get too much of that stuff around here anymore Cops have been good about cleaning things up. I got no idea who would have been doing the shooting or getting taken. Yeah, okay. Um, the Ritz Hotel? Uh, Cliff's done a real nice job, don't you think? Uh, good to see the neighborhood getting fixed up. Wait, Clint? Chocolate guy from the dumpster now actually runs the Ritz? Okay. Uh, ladder? What? I don't got a ladder. You might want to check at the Golden Gate Hotel. They've been doing a bunch of renovations. Okay, why would we want a ladder? Uh, Archie Ellis? I, I like that Archie fella. Real friendly. Don't always understand what he's talking about, but hey, different strokes for different folks, right? Is that the guy from... The electronic shop, question mark? Uh, three cards to midnight. That's the new thing. Yeah, nice to have some fresh blood here on Chandler Avenue. Yeah. Not really the kind of place I do a lot of shopping at, but uh, some folks seem to like it fine. Yeah, okay. Um, Chelsea? You know, I love Chelsea like she was my own daughter. I, I still miss her. Even after all this time. So Chelsea never came back from the abduction, but we did. Um, Taylor? I forget. You don't remember nothing about Taylor. She works for the Bay City Mirror. Does a lot of investigations. And she's a real peach. Sweet, smart, funny... Yeah, I wasn't too happy that you and her were spending time together. But maybe she was seeing through all that tough guy stuff. She's good that way. Okay, so she works for the newspaper, I think. Uh, Louis? No, oh, me? I'm just the same as always. Just a little less of me than I used to be. Exactly, he lost a lot of weight. Uh, the memory loss? I wish I could tell you everything you can't remember. But I don't know much. You and Chelsea went missing, and then you showed up out of nowhere a few weeks later. A couple of days after, you was gone again. I only saw you a few times after that. A couple of years went by, and then you came back, and something bad had happened to you. I don't know what. But it made you hard and mean, and you just got worse. You got to where I didn't even want you around anymore. Okay, so we came and went a couple of times? I can't go to the North Hill Clinic. Not now. I need to investigate the crime scene to find out what happened before the police arrive. Wait, you're telling me I missed something at the crime scene? I thought I looked at everything. I'm no detective, but you need to find a way to get up to the second floor of the electronics shop. You know, 
like a ladder. Okay, so that's why we wanted the ladder. Okay, so we probably go to the Golden Gate Hotel. Because everything else is closed, so... Wow, this place really has been renovated. I guess that dumbbell Ardo must have come into some money. But as I walk to the counter, I suspect this place is under new management. The holograms are people too? What? Welcome in. Welcome to the Golden Gate Hotel. How can I help you? Mr. Murphy? <laughs> okay, so she doesn't like us. Uh, also cute that she's called Holly Graham. Hologram, Holly Graham. Cute. Uh, fun remembrance. Whatever happened to or flattering comment? Um, I don't think getting cute with her is going to help her because she looks already angry with us, so. Last I heard, this place was condemned as a fire trap. When did you reopen? Just a few months ago. It's part of the Mutant Neighborhoods Renewal Initiative. Well, they just start recognizing as holograms. Um, let's be friends. It's very impressive. Nice to have some class around the joint. But you can drop the Mr. Murphy thing. Call me Tex. No, thank you. The last time I tried that, you were all... I'm a professional. and should be treated as such. <laughs> some sort of I just belong me like that. Management heard about it, and I didn't get any time off for a month. Uh... Okay. Uh... <laughs> does not compute. What do you mean, last time I was here? This is the first time I have seen you. So there's probably a bug in your system or something. No, you have memory loss, you idiot. Right up here, you know what? <laughs> um, get acquainted? So, do you got a name? You know very well who I am. Holly Graham, cute, right? Your tangibles just can't resist a pun. What? It's a cute name. Don't, don't be mad about it. Uh, spell check humor? No, 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 no. Um, ridiculous state? No, uh, funny people, I guess? Oh, yeah. We humans love the lowest form of humor. Speaking of which, holograms are people, too. I mean, what kind of a joke is that? Ah, uh, don't... So you can read. It's for the hologram rights movement. I hate to tell you this, but holograms aren't people. And I ought to know, because I've dated a few. That's exactly what they used to say about minorities, women, and mutants. It's our turn now. I'm officially on strike. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, pep talk? Well, more battery power to you. D oh. Really? You're the last person I thought I'd hear that from. Everyone in this neighborhood's afraid of you, you know. Afraid? Why? Um, crossed wires? Uh, I think you may have the wrong Mr. Murphy. A little Q&A might clear that up. Sure, though I should warn you, I don't get out much. Okay, so let's go down the list. Now that I know you support the hologram rights movement, I may have to reevaluate my opinion of you. Well, he did just say, hello cat, welcome back. He did just say holograms are not people, and all of a sudden you're okay with one remark of him? Okay, uh, abduction. I heard gunshots, and then the speeder came flying out and took off. Okay, yeah, we figured as much. Uh, the Ritz. Well, it's no Golden Gate Hotel, is it? No, true. Uh, do you have a ladder? We keep everything like that over at the Snow White Warehouse. Okay, so we need to get into the warehouse. Um, Archie. I think he came in one time with Mojo, the kid from the barbecue place. It was... awkward. <laughs> uh, Taylor. Taylor's my bestie. My real friend. I don't know what she's doing with you. 
Fair, Louie? The nicest tangible I've ever met. Uh, talk about you. Oh, you know me. Just a hologram. Here to serve my tangible oppressors. <laughs> okay, um... Talk to me about the warehouse. I've heard they keep a key or something to get inside the warehouse by the door. Somewhere by the door. Okay, that's good. I should look around the hotel lobby and see if there's anything here that could help me out. Oh! We can actually look in the lobby? Okay. Um, from the door, start left. Nice furniture. Uh, 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 that's a bad pun. I guess this is time out for unruly guests. Pfft, sure. Uh, we don't need to talk to her again. Uh... When visiting Salt Lake, be sure to visit... Oh. <laughs> so when visiting beautiful Salt Lake, be sure to visit... Oh, it's... Oh, it's for San Francisco. Right. All these pictures of how beautiful San Francisco used to be just depress me. Mm, I can see that. Uh, what is this? It's a key to a lockbox. Okay. Wait, huh? I thought we were supposed to find that key... Over there. Uh, how I am doing? Um, <coughs> it's getting a little better, I want to say. As long as I keep calm. Forget it, Jake. It's a Chinatown sale. How are you? Could use a throw pillow. Only guests of this hotel are allowed entrance through here. Uh, we are obviously not a guest. Um. Well, hopefully ballroom renovations include installing an actual ball pit. The uh, hardy har. I won't die. Keep calm in the same sentence. I mean, you've noticed I've been uh, quite a bit more laid down and calm the last few weeks. I haven't been my ragey self all that much, so. Um, so we now have a key to a lockbox, which was next to the door here. <laughs> Glad you finished your drawing. Yeah, it looks cute. Looks good. Uh, use this lockbox key. Uh... Uh, uh, G A T E for gate, no? Uh, O P E N. Uh, It's locked, and I need to find a way to open it. Yeah, um... Is there a number anywhere around here? Or do we just ask Holly for the number? I think we have to ask her. Wait, oh, that's a ballroom. Uh, here. Hey, Tex. How's your case progressing? Oh, you're not gonna tell me? I've heard they keep a key or something to get inside the warehouse by the door. Hold on, say that again? I've heard they keep a key or something to get inside the warehouse by the door. Yeah, they keep something by the door. We already had the key to the lockbox here, so the solution is around... Here somewhere? Oh, okay. What do we got here? It's like instructions to get into the Snow White warehouse. 
Okay. Um, can we have a look at that? What do we got here? It's like instructions to get into the Change Snow White Warehouse. Change the Snow White Warehouse logbox key code. It's 4268. Destroy this after reading. Well, he didn't. 4268. Okay. Um, good memories. Wow, is this still here? I used this to deal with a cunning criminal on my under a killing moon case who had a bad case of bozophobia. Yep, he did. My name tattooed on his knuckles, and he wants to show me firsthand when he gets out of prison. I'm not really looking forward to that. Okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep. Well, the owners must have really raised the rent on this place. There's hardly anything left on these shelves. Yeah, we're we're looking for a ladder. Um... The owners must have really raised the rent on this place. There's hardly like it is kind of dark, but I don't want to grab my flashlight and look at something sparkly. Everyday business? Yep. Um. Oh, wait. Yep, that's the Snow White Warehouse. So that's the ladder that we're looking for? What is this? Looks like an interesting read. A uh, Tex Murphy novel? Tex Murphy had uncovered the greatest secret in the history of the world. And there was there were some who would stop at nothing to protect. Looks like an interesting read. Uh, a little cheesy. But sure. Uh, wait, can we now just grab the ladder? Wait, what is this? Some familiar names on the Chandler Avenue sex offender list. Nilo Buglio, Benny Shaw, Ted Bear, Misdemeanor, and Scary Larry. Okay. Well, now that I have a ladder, I can get into the second floor of the electronic shop. Okay. So let's go into the second floor of the electronic shop. Wait, hold on. What is this? We cannot go in here. Okay. Thought maybe this was like a back door or something. Okay, so we use our ladder here. Okay. So, what happened inside here? Yeah, Louis once told me these rooms were used by bootleggers and smugglers during Prohibition. There were hidden panels in rooms where they'd hide their stash. Someone's been spying on the citizens of Chandler Avenue. Well, yeah, they were spying on you specifically. Well, someone's been living up here. Define living, but sure. Someone needs to update their poster collection. Prohibition ended a hundred years ago. And that's a damn shame. This guy was working diligently to get a free sub at Inspector Burns Barbecue. Okay, so the one that was spying on us was a regular at the barbecue. Okay. Someone needs to update their poster collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prohibition ended a hundred years ago. Uh, what the heck is this? Wait, is this Simon Says? Uh, a 
I'm lost. I'm completely lost. D D D D D D D D D D What? D D D D D D D D D D D D D D Wait. Huh? 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 Uh huh. Okay. Oh wait. Oh, pfft. I already started wrong. Okay. D. 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 Okay. Wait. What? Oh, that opened up the secret door, apparently. Uh, this feels like progress. Let's explore the rest of this place first. If we even can. Yeah, Louis once told me these rooms were used by bootleggers and smugglers during Prohibition. There were hidden panels we can't. in the rooms okay. where they hide their stash. Um, what else do we have in here? This is this is nothing we want to look at. Okay. The business card from a rival detective. What the hell? Okay, maybe they hired the other detective to look into us. Oh, I was anti-habition myself. Um, there's someone dead in here. What the hell's been going on in there? He's dead. Wait, that's the other PI guy. Okay, so that was a trap. Dial M for moron. <laughs> Following our first lead and we get ourselves caught in a laser net. All in a day's work, right? Smart Alex had a point but I wasn't gonna let him have the satisfaction of knowing so. There was one good thing about spending hours stuck in a laser net. You've got time to think. Who is this guy who killed him? And what kind of surveillance was he doing right across from my apartment? And what's in the metal canister? Have seven years really passed without me remembering it? Is it related to my head injury or the injection mark on my arm? Um, hello, who are you? Is he dead? Well, I think you missed a hell of a party. <laughs> a party? Yeah, you're here in time for the laser show. I wouldn't do that. I was here to meet Carlos Maldonado. Is that you? Or him? Uh, that's him. Look, I just stumbled onto this little nightmare. 
and I need to find out who this guy was and what he was doing. I'm a PI, and I assume this guy is Maldonado. My name's Murphy. Who are you? Mason said Maldonado was a PI. Were you working with Mason too? No. I'll be honest. I don't know if I was working for Mason or not. Uh, fair. Actually, fair. I'm having severe memory problems here. So anything you can tell me about Maldonado or Mason or what's in the cryo chamber here would be greatly appreciated. I think I set off an alarm when I came in here. I don't usually do this kind of thing. I was just trying to help Mason. He said, come in here, find the PI, get the cryo chamber, and keep it safe. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. I, I found that first. Slow learner, you have to find Mason. I think he's in big trouble with bad people. I don't know why. He's a neurologist, for God's sake. But you have to promise me that if I let you go, you won't come after me. You'll find Mason. Oh, I promise. My fingers are so frozen, I can't cross them. <laughs> If your memory problems are part of all this, Mason is the only one who can help you. So you need to find him and bring him back safe just as much as I do. I'll be in contact soon. Those cops are getting close, but I don't want to leave this place without a clue. I better hurry up and find something before they get here. Yeah. Not even one crate of mixers. This guy was hardcore. Not even one crate of mixers. This guy was hardcore. Yeah, tough break, hombre. Alright, grab the gun. Huh? Uh... Okay. This equipment is surveying several different locations, including my office. Yeah. Someone knows what I've been up to. This SOB's been living up here, watching my every move. This SOB's been this SOB's yeah, 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 been living yeah, okay. up here, watching my every move. Uh, Carlos. Here are the instructions. Mason Bowers. Well, that might come in handy. And what is that? Must be the poor guy's wallet. Um, we'll take it. Strictly speaking, I would never encourage anyone to break the law, but those sirens are getting awfully close, and a life sentence for a machine can last a very long time. So move! Okay, okay, okay. Shut up. As I try to make my great escape down the ladder, I find two officials waiting to greet me. Uh, whoops. Hello, boys. Well, <laughs> if it isn't Tex Murphy, what were you doing in there? Well, it's a little hard to exp... Oh, you know the drill. <laughs> <laughs> I was really trying to get my hands on that surveillance equipment. Maybe I could see exactly what happened to me. Now the only way I'll find it is if New San Francisco's Finest decides to play ball with me. I don't know where they'd start now, but I'd better polish up on the old Murphy charm. Whether you're a mutant or a norm, San Francisco's our home. Be a part of the solution to crime. If you see something suspicious, please report it to the SFPD immediately. Make it quick, Murphy. I got about a million things to do. And wasting time on you ain't one of them. Yeah. Didn't take you long to get in trouble, did it? You here to turn yourself in? Um, climbing the ranks? Danlich? I hardly recognized you. What, been 10 years? You were still a patrolman back then. I'm surprised you remember me. Um, familiar face. I may not have told anyone this before, but you're actually my favorite patrolman. Oh, In case shut you up. didn't get the memo, I head up the department now. And things aren't as loosey-goosey as they were under Malden. Um, is that a compliment? 
Yeah. You seem like a man who likes his gooseys tight. <laughs> so why is it you think I came down here to turn myself in? Well, we just found you at a crime scene with a dead body. That dead body happens to be Carlos Maldonado, a PI work in the same neighborhood as you. Is that your way of intimidating the competition? <laughs> um market saturation well lucky for me and carlos there's enough crime on chandler avenue to go around for two pis you boys do such a bang-up job down there. not true since i took over mutant neighborhoods get the same attention as the norms well i'll be sure to tell carlos's mother if you had one i was just reviewing your file when you came in is that a lot because it looks like a lot August, 2047, Beaton Ruiz, NSFPD informant. Beaten and hospitalized after providing information about Tex Murphy. Ruiz refuses to identify his assailant. No charges ever filed. Okay. November, 2048, surveillance video shows suspected extortionist Jen Lee leaving the Golden Pagoda with Tex Murphy, never to be seen again. The case remains unsolved. Shall I go on? In the past few years, you've gained quite a reputation for yourself. You've got new San Francisco's criminal underbelly running scared. Okay. Uh, look at the bright side. Well, you're a cop. Is, isn't that the way you like your criminal underbellies? Yeah. We arrest criminals so they can be tried in a court of law. We don't just kill them, and I won't tolerate vigilanteism. If you didn't kill Maldonado, what were you doing then? Um, genuine curiosity. I was awoken by gunshots. I was just trying to find out what was happening. Yeah? I followed the trail and saw that Maldonado had surveillance equipment aimed at my office. I want to find out what he recorded. Who cares what he recorded? If you're such an upstanding citizen, you've got nothing to hide, right? <laughs> um, strange bad fellows. <laughs> Look, I got jumped last night. I've got no idea who did it. I think there might be something on the surveillance tape. And if you can tell me what happened, I think I can help you on this case. Deal? I rarely make deals, and I don't need to make one with our only person of interest. Any more questions? Uh, yes, about... Okay, they actually do, like, gray out the things that really aren't important at all. So you don't just ask random stuff about random things about to, to anyone. Like, only the things that matter, sort of matter, can be asked about. So that's good. I'm not sure what to think of you, <coughs> Murphy. Uh, okay. Uh, I got... Well, there was an abduction. I didn't get abducted. I have no evidence of an abduction. Just a dead body and only one person of interest. It might be in your best interest if you could find out what happened. I'm trying, but you guys arrested me. That whole neighborhood seems to attract more than its fair share of trouble. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea? As far as the coroner and the commissioner were concerned, finding Chelsea's remains in your speeder were enough to pronounce her legally dead. I'm sorry, what? Her remains were in the back of our car? Say that again? As far as the coroner and the commissioner were concerned, finding Chelsea's remains in your speeder were enough to pronounce her legally dead. Wait, are they talking about her belongings, not her actual body? She's an investigative reporter at the Bay City Mirror. One of the less obnoxious ones. Investigative reporter. Okay, fair. That's what Taylor is. I'm not allowed to let you see it. Uh, fair. Um, can you tell me something about Maldonado? I know Maldonado was a dirtbag. But unless it's in self-defense, killing somebody, even a dirtbag, is a crime. And will be prosecuted. Yeah, but we didn't kill him, so we're fine. 
That encrypted memory stick probably has some useful information on it. Oh, great advice. If you could help me break it, then I'd be impressed. Guess I'll have to see if anyone else on the street can break it for me. Um... Well, the electronic shop is open now. Rumor is, Zach Williams, owner of the electronic shop, is tied to organized crime. Well, we've had our problems in the past. For example, the last time I was here, he shot my credit card into a million pieces. I'm hoping he's in a little better humor today and doesn't blow my brains out, or even worse. Or worse. Okay, I don't want any trouble. <laughs> um, guess we're on the same page. Well, just so I'm clear, what kind of trouble are you not wanting? Everyone knows what happens to people who get on your bad side. Only one reason you ever come in here, and it ain't to buy anything. You know all our stuff is junk. Um, poor management? <laughs> Do I ever? I mean, almost no inventory, you're hardly ever open. Even I could run a business better than this. Why are you busting my chops? You know what kind of business we're running here. Uh, make it clear? Because what are you running here? Are you saying this is some sort of front for organized crime? Because that sounds illegal. <laughs> Look, the guys upstairs don't want any trouble either. They said you can have whatever you want at cost. You can even put it on credit. Then I'll just tear up the bill. Um, I'm a okay with that. Um, dead man tell no, 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 we don't need to threaten him. Let's make a joke. No, I'm talking about literally upstairs. Upstairs. Look, I know how much you hated Maldonado, and I probably shouldn't have let him use the second floor. But he was paying cash, and he kept a low profile. So I thought it was all good. I didn't know what he was doing up there, and I didn't want to know. Fair. Um... Intimidation technique? Well, let's see what kind of useful information I can get out of you before I try jogging your memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Talk about us. You the man, okay? We good? Uh, sure, we good. We're good. Um, what did you hear? Look, I told the cops I wasn't here, which is technically true. I just parked out back when I heard the gunshots. So I just started the engine right back up and got the hell out. Smart thing to do. You live there, so I'm not going to say a thing about it. Uh, fair. That place opened up a couple of months ago. Doesn't look like my kind of joint. Okay. Uh, Louie? I do love Louie's cooking. Up. Just don't ask what's in it and you'll be fine. That's the case with every diner, I think. But sure. All I know is, you ain't the same guy that came slinking in here seven years ago. Okay. Sorry to hear about that. Is that what turned you into Mr. Badass? <laughs> I think he's the one who came by to check in on Maldonado. Must have been a client. Don't know anything else about him. Okay. So that was just a contact of Maldonado's? I saw him bringing some cameras, so he must have been recording the surveillance. But whatever he had got confiscated by the cops. Fair. Uh, I have a stick. I sell items to customers, not purchase them. Uh, okay, sure. Um, can you tell me anything about Maldonado? Sure, Maldonado was a creep, but his money spent just the same. He said he needed to do a stake out of the Ritz. Didn't mention any specific names. Didn't sound like a big deal, and he was offering a good chunk of change. Fair. Talk about yourself. Let's just leave me out of this. Okay? Okay, okay, sure. Okay, so he's not gonna help me. Um, Rook? Rook's the little gremlin who runs the pawn shop. I've heard that his hard shell is hiding a heart of gold. But if it was, he'd cut it out himself with a rusty soup can lid. <laughs> Murphy! Here, let me look at you. Uh, Louis told me something terrible has happened. I've been worried sick. 
Um, no touchy feely. If you try and hug me, I swear I'll scream like a little girl. <laughs> oh Lord! Please don't tell me that lump on your head has turned you back into the uh, pathetic pestering PI I used to know. Uh, <laughs> this is a nightmare. Um. Sarcastic sympathy? I'm sorry, Rook. I can only imagine how hard this is for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's temporary, though, right? A, a side effect? Please tell me you'll be changing back. Um. Text Miss Carol? <laughs> One of these nights, you're going to get visited by three ghosts, and it's going to be very scary for you, but then we're going to have turkey, and everything's going to be great. <laughs> Look, Murphy. <laughs> I'll grant you have some detective skills, but it was all relentless, annoying banter and endless questions to me. I mean, imagine my surprise when, over the past few years, you turned into someone I could actually tolerate. Okay. Uh, I'm repulsed by the thought, but yeah. Were you saying that you and I were buddy-buddy? Ill? What kind of a jackass did I turn into? <laughs> yeah. You cut out all the chit chat and became a no nonsense customer who pays in cash. You always seem to have plenty of cash. Okay, okay. Um. Hey, you sound like my ex wife. Yeah. How'd I end up with so much cash? Well, how should I know? I mean, if I'd asked you that two days ago, you would have punched me in the face. Okay, could be fun. Well, I'd be more than happy to do it now. If it'd help. Yeah. Oh, very funny. I'll admit, Murphy, you do have a certain charm. It makes my skin crawl. <laughs> sure. Um, old person humor. Well, if your skin crawls anymore, you're not going to have a face. <laughs> so why don't you tell me what me and my charm have been buying around here, and then I'll get out of here. All my transactions are done in strictest confidence. That hasn't changed. Yes, Starbuncle, another point-and-click-ish game with lovely cheesy, uh, cheesy FMVs. Yes. Um. Hello, the new text and the old text, they're technically the same. Cough it up. Fine, though I don't know anything that could possibly explain what's happened to you. Uh, believe me, I tell you if I did. Now, I suppose this is where you ask if I mind answering a few questions. But this is not for old time's sake. Yup. Okay, here we go. You became a sullen, short-tempered bully. And I miss that desperately. <laughs> I heard a commotion and saw a crazed man running willy-nilly down the street and two other men in pursuit. Okay, so there were two guys... Chasing us, maybe? I was hoping they would tear that flop house down. And they would have, too, if it weren't for that meddling Clint. Yeah, apparently Clint saved the Ritz. Again, who is Archie? Such an upbeat, chipper little man. Utterly obnoxious. Who is Archie? Is Archie, like, running to barbecue or something? I don't know. I went there once, never again. What with that herbal tea and incense, it's a veritable <laughs> gas chamber. Ugh. Um, Chelsea? I knew she'd get nothing but trouble being with you. Okay, uh, Taylor then? Louis niece is an absolute delight. What she sees in you is an absolute mystery. <laughs> uh, Louis himself. A prince among men makes me wish I could still eat solid food. Uh, there's a whole bunch of backstory there, I guess. Um, memory loss. Years ago, after Chelsea disappeared, you came to me looking for leads to some valuable items. Among them, a... Um, a lost Fabergé egg. You left the street for a long time. When you returned to Chandler Avenue, you seemed like a different person. A, a darker, a more dangerous. Okay. Yeah, we disappeared. We did some stuff. 
I understand you have a thing for holograms. Maybe she's just your type. D oh, shut up. I'm sure you know much more about that than I. Some say you know exactly what happened. Uh, I don't. <laughs> That's the man you think was abducted? The one I saw being chased down the street? I never heard his name before you told me. Mason Bowers is the one that got abducted. Yeah, that makes sense, maybe. Maybe. Why would I know anything about that? If the police confiscated it, I suggest you talk to the police about it. Fair. Um, uh, stick. What is that? Uh, okay. Uh, Maldonado. Maldonado? Uh, he puts the P.I. in pig. <laughs> I heard you two had something of a rivalry going on. Well, yeah, if we have a P.I. shop on the same street, then probably. At least he knows how to keep his mouth shut. Duh. Uh, next question. <laughs> yep, okay, that's Rook, all right. <laughs> now that Rook's is open, I'll bet his back gate's open, too. Ooh. Yes, it is. Uh, is this gonna give us another cute old cutscene? Yeah, I used to come back here and shoot hoops until I threw my back out. Yep, here we go. Ten seconds left. Down by one. Murphy has the ball. He fakes. He drives. It's a 360. He's full. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Why would a little gremlin like Rook have a basketball hoop? I don't know. Ah, oh, yes. Llama Claus would bring packs of cigarettes to all the good children around the world. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, hold on. What is this? Oh, it's, it's nothing? Yeah, the city of old San Francisco oh, picks up okay. the trash once a year. I think we're getting close to our day. Yeah, you told us that before. Um... Wait, an anvil? Lord knows what I could do with an anvil, but it might be useful. Did we really just pick up an anvil? Lord knows what I could do with an anvil, but it might be useful. Okay. Um. No one knows these back alleys of Chandler quite like me. What the heck is this? Uh, it's Rook's Hydropod Garden. Whenever I see this, I think of Gordon Fitzpatrick from my Pandora case. That's the game we didn't play. I've got anti-hydrogen pods on board, and I've got to get this as far away from Earth as possible. Pods? Pods. Anti-hydrogen pods. He wasn't from around here, or even from this solar system. Yeah, the, the fourth game, Pandora Directive... Uh, resolved around aliens. It, it's a weird story, to say the best. Um, okay, so we have an anvil now, I guess. Sure. Can we not just stick the memory card in our own computer and have a look? Like, just... Phone message. Phone message waiting. Okay. This message is for Mr. Tex Murphy. Storm clouds are brewing. Are you with white Russians or against us? A white guard member is close. Prove your loyalty and we will reveal the truth. What the heck was that? There must be another Tex Murphy in the phone book. No, that is just something we can't remember, but sure. Uh, computer. So, data stick use. Man, I don't even know what I was trying to do. What? Looks like somebody's wiped my computer clean. Really? We don't just put the stick in the computer? Okay. Then who the heck would help us with that? Uh, Holly? Wait, maybe Clint? Hmm. 
Hmm. Some pretty intense staring contests have been held right here. Heck, <laughs> Malden. That buffoon always got credit for cases I solved. Yeah, that was the chief commissioner of the police station in the old game. Um, the problem with vidphones is you can't call anyone from the bathroom anymore. Well, you shouldn't. Hello from the toilet. Ah, uh, the Presidio. I mean, the Palace of Fine Arts. No, wait, is it the Museum of Science? San Francisco just has too many landmarks. Right. Oh, wait, we can actually go back there? Hold on. Um. If a bell is on the front desk, I could ring it and talk to the clerk. Not just yet. It's best not to sit on these couches, but if you do, you better be wearing a hazmat suit. <laughs> Does look like it. Time to get a new clock. Uh, okay. As I ring the bell, I expect Nilo, but another familiar face pops up from behind the counter. It's Clint. Yeah. Looks like he's dabbled in some home plastic surgery to cover his empty eye socket. It's amazing what you can do with a tire patch, spray paint, and crazy glue. Ah, Mr. Murphy. Will you be needing some housekeeping done? I can't remember the last time we saw you around here. Recover chocoholic? Really? Uh, bring up the addiction. So, what are you doing behind the desk? Looking for Nilo's complimentary chocolates? You mean the ones you used to leave on the pillow, right? Those weren't chocolates, my friend. Man, I hope you didn't eat them. No. <laughs> Nilo, man, I haven't heard that name in years. Not since I bought this place from him. The city was going to condemn it, but Nilo didn't feel like fixing it up, so he sold it real cheap. Okay. Where'd he go? Where did Nilo end up? You mean Nelly? He got a sex change. Yeah, I don't know. He tried to pass himself off as his long-lost twin sister for a while, but that didn't fly. <laughs> okay. Uh, ladder of success? Well, you've come a long way, Clint. From living in a dumpster to owning your own dump. <laughs> yep. But on the bright side, we've exterminated most of the roaches and reinforced the foundation after the big quake last year. And finally got real fire extinguishers, so no more painted on safety features. We're up to a three-star cubic zirconia rating in the Mutant Leisure blog spot now. <laughs> I love the references here. <laughs> Um, second home? Well, with such deluxe accommodations, I'm surprised I'd stay anywhere else. Do you know where I stay when I'm not here? Nope. You pay me well to keep an extra eye on your apartment and my nose out of your business. Fair. Um, what is even is this word? Well, math isn't my strong point, but I think you're out of extra eyes. Did anyone ever tell you that you make it hard to give good customer service? It's come up a few times. You're paid through the end of the year, just like every year. You're hardly ever here these days, but hey, let me get my nose out of your business. That sounded disgusting. Let's change the subject. What can I do for you? Okay, uh, well, let's go down the list first. Me? You keep being my best tenant, and I'll be your biggest fan. Deal? Deal? Um, what did you hear? The cops came by to ask me about that, but I wasn't here at the time. Okay. Uh, the Ritz? This may not be much, but it's mine. I love it. Fair. Still don't know who Archie is. Nice guy, but he's got some screws loose. Okay. Dumbest name ever for a shop. Huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, the holes in my apartment, yes. Just get the holes patched before you move out, or I will keep your security deposit. <laughs> sure. Uh, Chelsea. Look, I know I used to joke with you about Chelsea being in love with me, but that was just my jealousy talk. Fair. Uh, Taylor? That's Louie's niece, right? Tall, brunette. Oh. Uh, she's mine. Hands off. Louie. I've got to steer clear of his diner. Too many chocolate memories. <laughs> Look, I've had my own problems, as you know. I was in a kind of a dark place seven years ago. Dark, bitter, sometimes nuts, raisins. God help me, marshmallows. 
Okay. Nice girl for circuits and chips. Eh, she's nice. Shut up. We don't need to talk about that, do we? That was a real tragedy. True. Um. Maldonado is spying on you. Are you sure it was you? <laughs> I can't help you with that. I can barely work a toaster. Okay. Maldonado? Mm -hmm. Nothing but trouble. I steer clear of that hombre. Okay. That guy's all mobbed up, so I keep my distance. Okay. Rook? That little gremlin's never forgiven me for stealing his newspapers and using them for blankets. <laughs> Talk about yourself? Me? I'm just living the dream. One chocolate free day at a time. Okay, so basically you told me nothing. Now what else do we have back here? Um Sapphire, eh? That sounds like a fun new neighbor. Domineering escort? Have you been a bad boy? Have we? Well, this is a flashy new neighbor. Uh knock knock. No, can I not knock knock? This is a flashy new neighbor. Too bad. Um yeah, needs a key. Okay. People who stay here at the Ritz don't want to be found. Fair. People who stay here at the Ritz don't want to be found. Um yeah, needs a key. Yeah, but there's also a bloody handprint. Uh -oh. That doesn't look good. Yeah. Yeah, needs a key. Okay. Well, that's something. And apparently this one needs a key as well. Yeah, needs a key. Okay. Well, I had this door permanently sealed as it opened directly into my bedroom. People thought that was awfully presumptuous of me. Exactly. This is the door, like, in our bedroom from the other side. Okay. Okay, so apparently this is also not the way to get this memory stick read out. Um, Holly, can you help us with that? Oh, she's gone. Holly must be out on strike. I'd better come back later to talk to her. Well, okay, cool. <clears throat> and then who else can we talk to? Is the barbecue open? Like, is it? It's closed. Most businesses on Chandler Avenue won't open until later. I mean, I see someone walking inside, but... Uh, let's have a look at Maldonado's place. Uh, what the hell is that? That's a spo pad, protecting the universe from imperfect life forms since 1967. That's like a mall cop with a 5,000 meter volt taser without a moral code. Be careful, Tex. I could get hurt. Um, let's try. Oh, wow. Well, that was sooner than I expected. Next time, try destroying the SFO pad before entering Meldondo's office. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, can we destroy it? Like, can we just... Oh, it's a security drone. If I enter its line of sight, I'm toast. Yeah, uh, we noticed. Um, do we drop an anvil on it? Um, apparently we do. Okay. That worked. Wow, nothing is so simple or wonderfully effective as blunt force trauma. Yep. Uh, now we still need a key or a card to get in here, and we don't have one. Or... Wait, we do! We have his key! 
That's right, we picked up his key in the in the back room. Wow, a place even sleazier than yours. And you have an animal print bedspread. Hardy har. <laughs> it's the depressed man's kitchen. Uh, sure. What's this? Yeah, what is that? It's a key to the exclusive llama club. Okay, so we can get into the llama club now, whatever that is. Both Maldonado and I appreciate subtle storytelling techniques. Maybe we could have been friends if you were alive. <laughs> His filing techniques are crude at best. Y yes. Uh, let's leave the desk for last. Both Maldonado and I appreciate subtle storytelling techniques. Yeah. His filing techniques are crude at best. Yeah. What is this? Play bub? Emily? Oh, man. I hope she's doing this to get through school. Who is Emily? Is that a reference? I don't get. Mm. I prefer Weenie World's tater tots. It's the only Roach Hotel where you have a better chance of survival inside than outside. Pfft. Uh, nothing in the drawers? Uh... Well, even I wouldn't stoop so low as to reading someone's diary. Yeah, you do. Hmm. I prefer Weenie World's tater tots. Motel postcards? Maldonado must make his living spying on cheating spouses. Hair cream? <laughs> Glad I don't need this. Amateur. Um, who is that? Hello? Oh. Could I speak to Carlos? Tex? Sorry, have we met? Uh, what? That woman knew me, but hung up quickly when she realized I didn't know her. If we can find her, maybe we could get some answers. She must have visited Chandler while she was doing business with Maldonado. Maybe someone around here will recognize the photo. Okay. Larry Hammond wasn't really a mutant. Larry Hammond? I wanted to make sure you came here alone. Well, I hope you were more careful about being followed than I was. Now, I have a very strong sense of self-preservation. I even brush my teeth carefully. Yeah, it shows. Man, he sure looked like one. Yeah, again, the game we didn't play. Yuck. There's gum in this shoe. Why? Anyway, we now have a picture of a blonde woman? If this woman has been doing business with Maldonado, maybe someone else on Chandler Avenue will recognize her. Uh, well, let's talk to Louie. He might know. I guess. Hey, what can I do for you, Mife? Uh, oh, we have a bunch of stuff. Uh, Holly. That Holly is a real spitfire. I don't know how I feel about the whole holograms of people too thing, but yeah, why not? Hmm. Fair. I can't really talk about that. Hmm, I'm sorry. If she died the way the cops said she did, bind inside your speeder. It's just too much to think about. Oh. I keep a little hope that maybe she ain't dead at all. Or at least that maybe she died in a more peaceful way. Okay, so there was a burned body in the trunk of her car, but it was never really confirmed that it was her, they just assumed? So that so-and-so was spying on you. You and I wasn't real close, so I couldn't say why he'd been doing that. Fair. Uh, the stick. I'm no good with that computer stuff, but that little fella at the barbecue joint is a whiz. I'll bet he could get you taken care of. Okay, so we need to get into the barbecue. You wouldn't remember him. He moved into the neighborhood a few years back. 
not a pleasant man. I'll leave it at that. Um, Zach. Uh, Zach don't come in here a whole lot. I guess he don't like my food much. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Brooke. Yeah. Same old ornery cuss he ever was. Eh, don't bother me none. Nah, I guess I'm just used to it. <laughs> um, Clint? That Clint's really come up in the wild. Though I still hide the chocolate cake when he drops by. I don't want him falling back into his, uh, old ways. Mm, that's nice. That's nice. Um, the photo. I might have seen this lady in here not long ago. Didn't catch a name. Hmm, okay. Uh. Haven't had another food joint on the street since Francesca ran the Slice of Heaven. Exactly. I thought it might cut into my business some, but not so far. Maybe we just don't have a lot of barbecue eaters around here. I mean, it turned from a pizzeria into a barbecue place. It, it's different, but shouldn't change much. Uh, can we now go in here? As I step into Inspector Burns Barbecue, I think there I'm having a stroke. But no, burning toast is their special today. Behind the counter is the kid who Louie referred me to as the computer whiz. Um... Hello? Oh, uh, what? Welcome to Inspector Burns Barbecue. My name is Mojo. Special today is chili con carnage. It'll destroy your hunger as well as your taste buds. Order when you're ready. Um. Okay, what kind of humor do we want? Let's go with a fairy tale pun. Well, those three little barbecued pigs look good. I could really wolf those down. No. Oh. Hey, hey you're, you're Tex Murphy. And you're Mojo. What a shagadelic name, baby. Yeah. Oh. My real name is Mordecai Josephus. Are you serious? Well, that's my real name, too. No way. Yeah, well, it's pretty close. Uh, it's actually Tiberius, uh, James Tiberius. And my mom, she starts calling me Tibby. And, well, I had to come up with something that I could live with. The ultimate Tex Murphy trivia. You just made my day. Uh, look, I don't mean to geek out on you here, but you're Tex Murphy. Badass private eye. Man out of time. Always quick with a joke or his fist. What are you doing in a dump like this? Um... Okay, um... What is this game? Uh, exactly. Yes. Uh, don't hit him where it hurts. He seems nice. Just state the obvious. I'm guessing Hello, you Goron. the Employee of the Month Awards, have you? <laughs> nice. Classic Tex Murphy. <laughs> and hello, beauty. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, wordplay. He likes that. Well, I appreciate you feeding my ego. Now, how about my belly? Uh... Oh, you don't want to eat here. The food really will burn your face off. Inspector Burns is a bitter, bitter man. <laughs> so, what are you working on? Wait, let me guess. Some kind of case just dropped in your lap. Seems like a small time job, but there are tons of loose ends leading in all kinds of directions, and you are blindly getting nowhere. Um, good guess. Well, yeah. That is kind of what's happened. Oh, I could help you. Uh, well, you can. Um, powers of for evil? What? Well, I guess you could grill the suspects. Oh. <laughs> oh. You are killing me. Look, Mr. Murphy, you fancy yourself a sort of a timeless classic. A PI archetype for the ages. You know you're way around the crime scene, but it's no secret that you're not so good at high-tech gadgets. That's where I come in. Uh, thank you for stating out the obvious. Um, optimism? Well, now that you mention it, there might be something you can help me with. Yeah. 
Um, but first, we're gonna go down the list and leave the stick for last. I just can't believe I got a chance to meet my idol. Okay. <laughs> Me and Archie are buds. Okay, but who is Archie? Talking about Minecraft. Why are you talking Minecraft? So glad Archie opened up his shop here. He's like a god at all this conspiracy stuff. Okay, so Archie is the one running the three carts to midnight. And we haven't been there yet because it was closed. Okay. Okay. So Archie is from the new... New psychedelic shop thingy. Spiritual thing. Chelsea Bando. The Nora to your Nick. I wish I could have met her. Nora, Nick? Uh, Louie. Inspector Burns has tried to torch the Bruins to at least twice. Pfft, uh, what? Inspector Burns has tried to torch the Bruins to at least twice. Why? Inspector Burns was about fire safety, not... Setting things on fire. Sometimes I spend hours just thinking about what kind of baby she and I would have together. D oh, ew, dude. Sorry you lost her, but man, did you ever get an attitude? Okay, we knew. You think Maldonado was spying on you? Not surprising. Why? Oh. Uh, well, we leave the stick for last. He's the guy you hired to take photos of your cheating wife. You're the guy they hired to beat the crap out of the guy you catch with your wife. <laughs> okay. He says he likes barbecue, so I'm not sure why he's here. <laughs> okay, Rook. Comes in here all the time to eat just so he can complain. Uh, that's Rook, all right. Who's that? Okay, he doesn't know the blonde. Like Inspector Burns says, it all tastes the same when your tongue's charred. True. Uh, okay, the stick, help me. Sure, I can decrypt the memory stick, no problem. It may take a while, at least a day. Oh, well, okay. Another item on my to-do list today is checking out Maldonado's regular office that's on the street. Wait, what well, we just did. We, we already did. What? Okay. Um, wait, so we just need to ask more people about the blonde, I guess. Not again. You're going to get me fired. Or worse. <laughs> that guy's a go-getter. Why don't you get him to answer these questions? Oh. I don't know what it is they're serving in there, but it sure as hell ain't barbecue. Fair. Okay, do you know the blonde? That's a fine piece of humanity there. She stopped by the other day and checked out our selection. Took her about two seconds to realize it was all crap. So she seemed to know her stuff. Okay, so she knows her tech stuff. As I made it perfectly clear, your status as a paying customer earns you a modicum of goodwill. I suggest you use it judiciously. Sorry, you lost me at modicum. Yep. Look, answer a few questions for me and I won't kick your butt when I get my memory back. <laughs> okay. Like I always say, you can take a bomb out of a dumpster, but you'll never get a dumpster out of a bomb. <laughs> okay. Just smelling the fumes coming off that establishment irritates my bowels. Who is the actor who plays Tex Murphy? Well, it's the same actor from the previous games who played Tex Murphy. And he's actually the director of the Tex Murphy games. Lovely. Oh, she may have come by here. I can't be sure. Okay. Can't be sure. Um, Clint? Can you tell us who the blonde is? Always happy to help out my best tenant. He looked like Tywin Lannister? No, not even close. I haven't tried it. They say that the sauce will melt your eyeballs, and that's a risk I'm just not willing to take. Yeah. <laughs> that blonde. I know for a fact I've never seen this fox before, because if I had, she'd be my lady love. Mm, no, she wouldn't. Uh, 
Um, now this place is actually like closed. Three cards at midnight isn't open right now. I'll have to try back later. Um, closed. Yeah, this building's been a lemon for anyone who's tried to open a business here. Yeah. Uh, Holly, she's back. Hey, Tex. How's your case progressing? Um. Let me check. I can confirm that Mason Bowers has been a registered guest here. Sorry, Tex. I'm not allowed to give out any more information than that. Okay, so Mason Bauer was around here. We already knew that. If I could smell, I'm pretty sure he would stink. <laughs> Always looks like he's up to something unsavory. Okay. Uh, Rook? That crusty old perv is always coming in here trying to get a peek at my underpixels. <laughs> <laughs> underpixels? <laughs> what? <laughs> the Ritz landlord? Seems like he may have a couple of screws loose, but nice enough. Okay, okay. I think the kid who works here has a crush on me. Maybe one of these days I'll rock his little world. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, do you know the blonde? Yeah, I've seen this woman in here. In fact, she picked up a piece of mail that's been delivered here. I might be able to get a name or address for you. Let me see if I have an image of the envelope. Yep, got it. I'll print it out for you. Oh, thank you. Holly sends the information about the mystery woman to my smart Alex, and I get a new location on the map. It's on the coast near Monterey. Whoever owns this place has mucho dinero. Okay. So, oh wait, yeah, we also can go into the Llama Club, but hold on. We have Whoa. the beach house. I get in my speeder and realize I'm very wobbly and my vision's pretty fuzzy. I realize it's finally time to get this head wound checked out and some professional input on what's happened to me. Now's as good a time as any. I call a cab and I'm on my way to the North Hill Clinic. Okay, fair, fair. Where are you headed? The doctor North Hill clinic. Well, I better step on it. You look like you're in pretty bad shape. Your eyes are really bloodshot. Yeah, you should see it from this side. You live around here? Yeah, I do. Live the Ritz. I've heard there's a lot of Morlocks in that area. Morlocks? Morlocks. That's what they call them. Some new crazy type of mutant. Really? Yeah, I've heard rumors that they're uh, attacking people. On Chandler Avenue? Just rumors. But you never know. Things could get worse, sir. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, just wanted to let you know I was packing heat up here. Didn't mean to freak you out. Well, that's fine. It's just the last time I got a ride from someone. They shot me, so I'm a little jumpy. Yep. <laughs> it's a nice gun, by the way. I used to have one just like it. I've had this for a long time. Some idiot threw it out his window. <laughs> the head wound is painful for sure. Maybe this Dr. Donahue can help me sort things out. <laughs> That's cute. be a problem patient <laughs> um good scolding you know you really shouldn't keep these things on the floor <laughs> germs <laughs> i'm just going to assume you've got some head trauma Let's see what's going on um 
Okay, a doctor never sits in a desk chair like this when looking at a patient, but okay, fair. Um, dream come true. Over the past few months, I've been having these really vivid dreams. I mean, they're so real, I can't even tell I'm dreaming till I wake up. Uh, what's happening right now kind of feels like that. Do you want to know if you're dreaming right now? No. Ah. Yep. Yep. You're awake. So tell me what happened. Well, I woke up a few hours ago with this goose egg on my head and an injection mark on my arm. I've got no idea how I got them. As a matter of fact, I have no idea about anything over the past seven years. Oh. You took a pretty good shot to the head. Enough to knock you out, maybe cause some short-term memory loss, but not for seven years. Let's see that mark on your arm. I think we'll need to draw some blood. <laughs> Everything on your form accurate? Uh, mostly? Uh, everything except my name, address, and billing information. Yep. Oh, I'm guessing your bloodstream's full of cholesterol and toxins, but I'm sure we'll find something else there, too. Have you ever had an implant? Um, just once. Just one, but it was a long time ago. It was, it was in my brain, so I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> Well, that injection mark concerns me, but I don't want to speculate. I would really like to keep you overnight for observation. You mind waiting around until we figure this out? Um, on one condition? Sure. If we can get it done in five minutes. <laughs> While we're waiting, though, could I ask you a few questions? Um, okay, this list is at least short. Let's just keep this professional, shall we? D uh, okay, uh, Taylor? I don't think you could do much better. And yes, I mean that the way it sounded. Uh, okay, sure. I believe he runs a diner over on Telegraph Hill. Why would we want to ask you about Louie, though? Oh, because uncle. Yeah, fair. Okay. I've dealt with many cases of amnesia, but nothing exactly like this. Okay. After leaving North Hill, I get a cab ride back to my office. After a while, I'm feeling a little better, so I hop in my speeder and head out to the address of the mystery woman, who I hope can give me info on Mason Bowers. So, this is the house of the blondie? Nice, this is more like it. Fun fact, this is a former vacation home for three James Bond villains. Goldfinger! <laughs> okay, sure. I guess they're just really upfront about where they got their inspiration for this house. Where we can just walk in, no problem. I mean, it looks nice. Expensive. Ceilings are good for keeping God's prying eyes out of your business. Not when you have a giant hole in your ceiling, but sure. Well, there's room for every member of the Brady family on here, except Alice, and I never considered her part of the family anyway. I don't know the Brady Bunch. Uh, what? Baseball card? Huh, used to collect these as a kid. Now I collect past due notices. Hardy Har? Wait, why do we have a baseball card? Classic. These baseball cards are great collectibles. So we're looking for more? Oh, what? This coffee table's a special design. It's got a hidden drawer. Oh, really? If we spin them all? Oh. Okay. What is this? Uh, nope. Well, one man's trash is a PI's clue. Okay, but what was it? Seems Mason was treating someone with serious facial deterioration. Mason, the cryogenic sleep state that has caused so much physical and mental damage to the Morlocks is beginning to affect me. The f 
flesh or fresh disease seems to be speeding up causing serious deterioration on the right side of my face I do hope you will have a solution for me soon T so Mason was a plastic surgeon is a plastic surgeon hello and what is this the eight lost rules of etiquette hello the eight lost rules of etiquette rule number one a friendly greeting could open doors for you <laughs> the hearty horror uh, a kind greeting such as hello and then can the words please go away four three five five six so that's hello in numbers okay sure this coffee table's a special design yeah it's, yeah, it's not my style barrels make any interior space look more rugged hey smoke no more cigarettes i hear they have a smoking deterrent system built right into the cigarette hey buddy do you know a thousand people stop smoking every day by dying you moron kissing you would be like licking an ashtray get it dumbass did you know that you and I are similar? We both are certified butthead. No, 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 don't kill me. I have mercy. <laughs> well, the system's about as effective as other systems I've tried. But I'll keep these in case I have a smoking emergency. <laughs> okay. Nothing adds personality to a room like throw pillows. Uh, wait, hold on. Wait, I thought I saw something. Oh, um. Hmm. That's interesting. But I thought I saw something. Oh, that was the light. I thought I saw something behind the pillow, but. Yeah, it's not my style. Okay. Uh, where do we start? What is this? Neurosurgery for dumbasses? Now that? It's my kind of book. I'm ho uh, hoping that this doctor was a little bit better than learning it from this book, though. Oh, it's like a villain from a terrible B-movie. Mollusks, beware. Okay. Um, what do we have here? Who sells seashells by the seashore? She? Who sells seashells by the seashore? Yeah, just some books. Uh, okay. Hey, bada, bada, bada. Okay, so this guy is obviously a baseball fan. Must be a Barry Bonds baseball. It's got an asterisk on it. Staring at this picture is more exciting than watching a game of baseball. <laughs> uh, the soothing, sultry siren song of Red Cat. If you say so. Reminds me of the time I tried to cook meatloaf. Ah, okay. That's number eight. That might come in handy. A collector's edition of Matt Cubase Tyler baseball card. I wouldn't dare thieve that. Well, this looks cheap. Who sells seashells yeah. by the seashore? Isn't that Deforest Bunny from Night of the Lepus? If you say so. Nothing I can use. Um, now that was a terrible year for wine. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't know wine, so... Say hello to my little friends. Now that was a terrible year for uh, Just some bad puns. Well, or there's references. Or whatever. Uh, what do we have down here? Oh, uh, number five. Nice. Pillaging must be one of their hobbies. Pillaging must be one of their hobbies. Ah, light bulbs. I can't think of a greater genius than Edison. Really, I can't. What do we have here? An office? Um, this frame needs nine baseball cards. Nine? Yeah, nine. So, uh, well, we have four. Because I better not be too creative because it won't work. 
This frame needs really? nine base. Hold on. Well, that was stupid. Okay, so we need to collect all the cards first. There's just no accounting for good taste. Yeah, that's about the only sailboat I could afford. Yeah, just some books. They look like just some books, so. Wrong form of it. Come on, people. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna read that. No, that's not important. Okay. Oh, sure, that seems impressive. But I bet you it wasn't nearly as difficult as obtaining my PI license from an entire summer of night school. It takes a man of exquisite taste to truly appreciate a pleather chair. If you say so. Uh, what is this? There's a past due notice here. You're late, you bum! Self, <laughs> check and make sure I made my speeder payment. Okay. That's getting into some Harry Potter ish kinds of letters. Oh, I don't think a lot of studying went on in here with that flat screen TV on the wall. It's not that flat, though. Especially for 2050. Okay. Now I could use that. Number four. Um, let's explore down here first before we go upstairs. Um... Okay, so this is a sliding door? Sure. In the immortal words of Goldilocks, this chair is just right. Oh, the table's all wobbly. I think that's upside down. Is it? No, it's not. There's people on a boat here. Magnets. How do they work? Uh, magnetism? Why are we checking his fridge, though? Really? They found someone to eat this crap? What, regular pizza? What's wrong with that? What is that? Oh, it's butter. Okay. That's a terrible place for a petri dish. Uh, wait, what? Uh, tried to make a hard-boiled egg using one of these. That was a, pe a petri dish. This petri dish is encrusted with all sorts of gunk. I'll need to clean it off to see what's underneath here. Okay, so we're gonna clean out a petri dish that we found in the oven. <sighs> this coffee's been out here for days. Never ever stick your hand in a toaster. True. Good lesson. Yep. That's a sink. Yeah. Not much of a view. There's no view. But, okay. Mm, salty. Yeah. Mm, tasty. Cookies? Nope. Just for... <laughs> uh, what is this? Standard groceries, and none of them look very edible. True, because... The graphics aren't great. Ah, fine feast for mice. You can really judge a person by the kind of groceries they buy. If you say so. Ah, delicious jams. Ah, there must be something I can eat around here. Huh, it's no good to me without alcohol. I've always learned the hard way that the stove gets hot. <laughs> uh, Standard groceries and none yeah. of them look very edible. I really should look into getting a kitchen for my apartment. Um, well, judging by all this fiber, the owner has digestive issues. Okay, I have problems with this because there are sardines on this, like right here, but also here, but also here. Why? And then up here again. Why? Why? What is it? Ugh. Also, this is just junk. Really? They found someone to eat this crap? Uh, get, get, get. Uh, okay, there is at least a baseball card in here. 
That was the only thing besides a petri dish that we found in here? Wait, do we just clean it out here in the sink? Man, I don't even know what I was trying to do. Clean out the petri dish. That's what you wanted to do, you idiot. Ooh, the bathroom. Bath. Let's see, that says B A B B. Oh, bath. Right. Yeah, I believe that's a towel. Don't know what's in the petri dish. Not me neither, but he wanted to clean it out to see. Yeah, rub a dub dub. <laughs> Tsunami! <laughs> Or something. Tsunami! Yeah, okay. Ooh, Mike and Ike! Another Mike and Ike Hammer candy comic. Gun drops and lollipops. I'll put this in my comic book rack collection in my office. Uh, what is this? Well, one man's trash is a PI's clue. Yeah, but what is it, though? Oh, it's another... Surely, after all we've been through, you would not turn against me and turn to her. Looks like someone with the initial T was doubting Mason's allegiance. Hold on. Several of my sources are questioning your allegiancy. Surely after all we've been through... Uh, excuse me. You would not work against me and turn to her. You've been very well paid for your work. And I do not take kindly to those who betray me. Okay. Rummaging through trash cans can be considered a low point in some people's lives, but not mine. No bidet? Oh, sick. Oh, Lord knows I could use a plunger at my place. Nope, nothing worthwhile on these shelves. Uh, okay, well, thank you. Ah, a remembrance of a much simpler time. If you say so. Boy, I try not to look directly into a mirror because it's kind of bad for my self-esteem. <laughs> my landlord always reminds me that indoor plumbing is a privilege, not a right. Uh, I disagree, but sure. Okay, so I guess we go up now? Well, look at this. I mean, it's not much for privacy, but this is nice. I don't know if I get the open concept between these two bedrooms. Yeah, no, exactly. But still, it looks nice. Hmm, nothing. Nothing. Mike and Ike. It's Mike and Ike Hammer candy comic. Sleep with a Swedish fish. Put this in my comic book rack collection in my office. Perfect place to keep a midnight snack. Uh, true. Perfect place to keep a midnight. Oh, perfect for watching someone while they sleep. Uh, that's disturbing. Oh man, I hate retro things. Uh, how many levels of meta is that? Uh, more nothing. And more nothing. If the owner's ventriloquist dummy's in here, I'm going to be very upset. Well, then just don't look. Oh, what? Oh, here we probably put in the, the numbers we found downstairs. Hold on, hold on. Hello, what's this? Yeah, this is... like another room behind this wall, but yeah. how do I open it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's look around here first. Vertical stripes make these chairs look taller than they actually are. No, they don't. Well, I see they like to keep things hot in the bedroom. Har, har, har. Gross. This bowl is full of fruit. Yeah, ew. Well, no big bad wolf will be getting in here. Ew, healthy stuff. Yeah, just some books. I mean, oh no, I was going to say, this blue book looks really different than the rest, but they are also here. If the owner's ventriloquist... Yeah, yeah. Mm. Nice place to get all warm and snuggly. Yep. Mm, nothing here. What is this? An old Zoom portable music device. 
Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, my mom got me one of these while all the other kids were getting iPads and iPods. I remember just how I felt that day. I wonder what happened to it. Oh yeah, now I remember. <laughs> uh, what? Um, well that was unnecessary. Okay. Perfect place to keep a midnight snack. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. Now I could use that. It's just planned. Planned? Yeah. Wait, hold on. So how many do we have? Seven. And we needed nine. So we're almost there. Let, let's... That's plastic. Yeah. So what was it? Um, hello, right? So four, three, five, five, six. Yep. There we go. Uh, wait, what? Oh. Huh? Drugs, guns, and something? Or the fast and the curious. Hmm. Hoping to find more information about why sleazy P.I. Carlos Maldonado has been keeping an eye on my place leads me to a swanky beach house where I'm delighted and surprised to meet an incredibly beautiful woman inside a home medical office. Unfortunately for me, the feeling is not mutual, and she's accompanied by a very lethal friend. Freeze. What are you doing here? Um, well, we had such a charming conversation on the vid phone. I knew I had to meet you. Now I'm rethinking that. <laughs> you don't remember me, do you? No. Well, I wish I did. Does that count? We met just once, years ago. So did you really come here looking for me? Or are you here for Mason? I'm sorry. The correct answer is C, all of the above. I came here to find you, but it's Mason I'm looking for. Well, you'll have to make do with me. Mason isn't here. So how do you know Mason? In the biblical sense, I'm his wife, Ariel. Ariel Bowers. <sighs> okay. When was the last time you saw him? Over a month ago. <laughs> no kidding. A wife like you, I'm surprised he ever leaves the house. We've been legally separated for over a month. He has issues. Erratic behavior. Periods of deep depression. It got to be too much. Psychological problems, huh? What are we talking here? He ties his shoe for an hour or he walks into Burger Barn with dynamite in his pants? I think it was just a reaction to stress. His work kept him away for weeks at a time. So I heard your husband was a neurologist, like a brain surgeon or something. Or something, yes. He worked in neurochemistry, how chemicals influence neural operations. Okay, so who's he working for now? Mason never talked about his work, even before we separated. But we stayed in touch. This was the longest he ever went without calling me. I got worried and came here. I found Maldonado's number and called to see if he knew anything. Yeah, well, Maldonado's not going to be able to help us much because he's dead. Is that who you were coming to see on Chandler Avenue? Yes, that's right. What happened to him? Well, I'm not sure, but I'm trying to find out. But the trail seems to lead through your husband, who, by the way, I believe has been abducted. Abducted? Now I'm worried sick. What are we going to do? Well, to start with, if you could think of anything that could help me out here to find him, that would be a big help. I will. Feel free to look around here. I wish I could stay and help, but uh, I'll give you my number so you can call me later. And sorry about the gun to the head thing. Oh, it's okay. I've just got one of those faces that probably look better with a hole in it. <laughs> I have my doubts about Ariel Bauer's motivation. Yeah. She certainly seems to have an agenda which includes more than just her husband's well-being. What's she up to? Exactly. Like Hubba, hubba. <laughs> Is it hot in here or did my internal fan just crash? Well, it feels like I'm being played for a sap. Oh, come on. She's just getting ready to play the field. I'd like to bring her over for a debugging session. <laughs> okay, enough. Exactly, enough. But yeah, I, it felt like she wasn't like completely telling the truth. So, I'm not sure if we should... You don't have to put on the red light. Rick! 
I'm not sure she was telling the truth. Just looking at this gives me an icky feeling. Thyroid diseases, normal brain, human stomach. Sure. Just looking at this gives me an icky feeling. Okay. Looking at medical posters always gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, it's fine. Unfortunately, it's not the tunnel of love. Uh, okay. I got a feeling that's not a crochet needle. Uh, can we operate this thing? Unfortunately, it's not the tunnel of love. No. I'm sure these MRI pictures are showing me something. <laughs> Future MRI, I guess? Uh, it's just another... Wait. Uh, we need numbers. Um... Those are too many fingers? Well, it's a microscope. And you'd need one of these just to see Rook's sense of humor. <laughs> I'm sure these MRI pictures are showing me something. Uh, yeah. Oh, what a very hospitable guest room. It's not. This table, a little small for my taste. Okay, what do we have here? Nothing I can use. Okay. My business card? Yeah. How did Mason Bowers get this? Well, apparently he knew us. This looks like a good bathroom read. You'd need a you PhD really to understand any of these books. Uh, really oh, there's a fax. Okay. Hold on. You'd need a PhD to understand any of these really books. Really okay, a fax. Really Looks like Carlos Maldonado was trying to get a hold of Mason about someone named Margaret Leonard. Mason. It looks like Margaret Leonard is going rogue. What should I do? Carlos Maldonado. Okay. Just the place to conduct some business. Uh, what is that? Well, I wonder what's on this little device. Is there not a memory stick? This memory stick probably works on the computer in Bauer's MRI room. Um... Which computer, though? Because this is a vid phone. If I found a flash drive, I could connect it to the video screen. Oh, okay. So we do use it here. Long-lasting memories are created through a process of consolidation, which is based on the formations of protein in the brain. Thus, memories, particularly painful ones, are formed by these unstable proteins, making them easily identifiable and removed with a combination of drugs and behavior therapy, ensuring memory elimination. Of course, there are those who do not believe that the benefits of memory modification outweigh the risks. They warn that eliminating memories, one could significantly alter a person's personality, their history. So, a fancy device that wipes your memories, hmm? Useful technology. I see applications for anyone who ever went out with you or read the Twilight series. <laughs> Little mercy here for the victim, all right? Why would Bowers want to erase my memory? Okay, so we probably did lose our memory through the injection then. You'd need a PhD to understand any of these books. Huh. It's a choose your own adventure neurology book. It's a shame no one's ever gotten it right. <laughs> okay. Uh, button? Is that a button? He's looking a little under the weather. Yeah. Looking at medical posters always gives me the heebie-jeebie. Nice style work. Okay. Um. Wait, what the heck is this? Looking at medical posters always. Gives uh, okay, me the heebie same heebie-jeebies. Um. So basically, this room gave me nothing other than. I need to find a code and I don't know oh wait hold on yoink 
What is this? Well, these are not the type of instruments I ever wanted to learn to play. Oh, wait, hold on. I thought we could grab this thing, but no. Okay. Wait, so we have... Petri just in... Uh, uh, well, that would actually, that actually makes a whole lot of sense. Like, actually look at the Petri dish under the microscope. This Petri dish is filthy. I'll need to clean it off before I can use it on the microscope. Clean it off? Yeah, but how would you want to clean a Petri dish? Wait, so we have eight baseball cards? We need to find one more. Did we miss one somewhere? Um... We didn't find anything in this corner, did we? No. Must have gotten these from the big and tall curtain store. Hardy har. Wait, so where did where could we have missed a another baseball card? Yeah, we we got that one. Pillaging must be one of their hobbies. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, if you know what I mean. Not really. Wait, what is this? Sulfuric acid. <laughs> I better be careful with this. Um. Sulfuric acid can be very useful in cleaning chemistry equipment. Okay. So we use that with the petri dish. I guess luck counts for something. Okay, sure. So we can now look in the Petri dish in the microscope? Something very tiny is written at the bottom of this Petri dish. I'll need some help reading the inscription. You'll need some help reading the inscription. The microscope well, is your microscope. Help. And you'd need one of these. Something very Oh wait. Press the wrong button. 670. Is that the combination for for this thing? Okay, cool. Oh, and there's our final baseball card. That's okay. Interesting. Anatomy books. Used only for medical research purposes, I'm sure. Ew. Something tells me the doctor got a lot of toothaches. <laughs> okay, so he opened up this closet just to get the final baseball card. It's a little weird, but sure. Um... Hydrate. Yes, thank you, Durbel. Wait, so we need to order these... Oh, wait, I get it, I get it. We need to order these in such a way that each row adds up to 17. A.K.A. the number right here. So these four need to add up to 17, these four, and these four. All of these need to add up to 17. Pooh. Um. This would be a perfect D&D puzzle. <laughs> Just saying. So, for instance, if we put like three, four, that's seven, so we need to make ten. <laughs> Your DM's listening. 
Uh, wait, so that's... If that's seven, then... Uh, wait, no, not seven. Um, two, eight makes ten. I feel like the bigger numbers need to be... Like at the corners, but... Uh, I don't know, five, so thirteen... Uh, no, that's already way too big. Hold on. Hold on. Let, let's actually put some big numbers at the corners, I think. So... Well, no. 8 plus 9 is already 17. So that doesn't even work. So... If we have 9 here, we need to make 8. So that's 1, 2, 5 or 1, 3, 4. So let's start with 1, 3, 4. This is 12, so we need to make 5, which we can't. So if we switch these around, this is 11, we need to make 6, which we can't. So what if we put the 1 here? That's 9, we need to make 8, which is 2, 6. Which leaves 5... Uh, Five seven here, but that's way too much. Cause that's fourteen plus seven is twenty one twenty three. So what? So we have seventeen seventeen, but twenty three. So this needs to be six lower. Yeah, probably the small numbers in the corners, like right there. That that was it. That was all I needed to do. Because this was 23, and I needed to subtract 6. So switching the 3 and 9 around didn't change anything here. Keeping this at 17, but subtracting 6 from this. And that was the solution. Uh, Lots of cash. Money? Usually a sign of illegal activity. And what is this? Pawn Weekly, maybe even sadder than that. Cat Weekly magazine. Yeah. The drawer inside this safe needs two additional cards. Whatever's in here must be so important that Mason Bowers keeps both the cards with him at all times. Um, okay. So we need to find Mason Bowers to open the final drawer? Hold on, but what is this magazine? Looks like Bowers was interested in some Nikola Tesla artifacts from Rook's Pawn Shop. From Rook's Pawn Shop? Well, maybe we need to have a little chit-chat with Rook then. Because clearly he knows Mason Bowers better than we thought he did. Um, back to Chandler Avenue. I better drop by the barbecue joint and see how that dweeb Mojo's doing. Maybe he's decrypted that memory stick. Yeah, about time too. Also true. Need a new lead on this case. Well, not necessarily yet, but yeah, we do. Well, let's have a chat with Rook first about the Tesla stuff. Uh, we need to talk. Uh, do we have to really? Yeah, <laughs> trust me, you may be involved in what happened to me. Oh, the very thought makes me giddy. I knew you'd be pleased to hear that. But it's all tied to items of Nikola Tesla and a man named Mason Bowers. Well, it's true. It's true I've had some very rare Tesla items in my possession from time to time. But I have uh, never heard of this uh, Mason Bowers. You know Carlos Maldonado? Well, of course I know that wretched swine. Tell me how he ties into Tesla. Maldonado tried to bribe and threaten me to reveal my source of my Tesla items, but I didn't give it to him, and I won't give it to you. Do you think Maldonado was the one watching you? Yeah, I think so. Oh, my, my, my. That could be troublesome. I need to make some inquiries. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, well, apparently not, so... He's gonna look into it. That's fine. Let, let's have a chat with uh, Mojo. Um. 
So your memory stick's all ready to go. Now, what do you give me for it? Excuse me? Excuse me? You think I'm going to solve your case for free just because you're my idol? Yes. No, the great Tex Murphy wouldn't lift a finger without compensation. Neither will I. Oh, my God. Um, intimidation? Look, Sonny. Extortion is a very serious business. Do you have an action figure? I want something money can't buy. Uh, leftovers? I used to have a Pez dispenser. <laughs> no, I want an action figure of you. What? Uh, skeptical, more skeptical? I don't have anything like that. My apartment's practically empty. Even if I did, how do I know what's on the memory stick is even worth anything anyway? You know how your cases always have a hundred loose ends and you need that one missing piece to tie it all together? <sighs> Anger. Yeah, so? This could be that one missing piece. Mr. Murphy, you need this. Um, still angry. Fine. You don't want cash. Would you settle for my dignity? Do you remember that sicko who was going around with a liquid nitrogen freeze gun, shooting people and then smashing them? The press called him the Nitro Stalker. You got involved in the We call him Mr. Freeze? Later, smashed into a million pieces. Uh, punny? Sounds like he was pretty broken up. Everybody <laughs> knows you were behind that bit of freeze dried justice. The freeze gun was never found, and I'm betting you took it. I'll trade you the memory stick straight up for it. Um, no help? Yeah, but I'm guessing that you have no idea where this freeze gun is. Yeah, I thought so. Um. Don't know. So we're looking for a freeze gun now to get the information. Who'd know about that stupid freeze gun around here? Uh, well, Rook probably. Well, if it isn't Mr. Van Winkle, what is it I can help you with, Rip? Ah. Uh... Well, the freeze gun, the one you pawned that supposedly belonged to the Nitro Stalker. Yeah. I believe it was purchased by one of those vigilante Morlock hunters. Uh, and do you know who? Uh, Louis, maybe you can tell me something? It's real good having you stop in more regular. There. How can I help you? Yeah, thank you. You got me there, Moist. Uh, uh, okay, well, okay, cool. Um... I'm guessing he doesn't know more anything questions? else. Why you got to keep coming back with more questions? Because I have questions. Can't help you with that. Okay, cool. Well, that's it. Thank you. Um, you probably don't know anything about this, but we can try. A bell will be placed in the lobby if a clerk is on duty. Okay, so we can't even ask him. Can we ask you? Well, this is a flashy new neighbor. No. Too bad. Uh, this is still closed. Um, Molly? Can you help me? Hey, Tex. How's your case progressing? Uh, freeze gun. Not a clue. Nah, I thought as much. <laughs> um... Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Rusty's open. Oh, Lord, we beseech thee. Give us strength, courage, protection. Hail, fellow countrymen. We are ready to begin our quest. Hunting the dreadful night beast. Make haste. Sorry, Tex, we gotta run. Farewell, Sir Larry Curly and Mo. I'll be sure to tell Snow White you're gonna be late for breakfast. Ooh, now this place is cool. A nerdy seventh grader's paradise. Yeah, every weapon you'd ever need to be a level 85 World of Warlord chieftain. Yep. Well, I don't teach go-go dance at my academy. Uh, 
We're more respectable than that. Back in the Hayes Code days, couples had to sleep in two separate sleeping bags. Okay, this shop, they did change a lot. Because there used to be a counter just left to right and then an extra room here. Not back there. But sure. Good lord. They're LARPers. Yeah, you figured? Gross. No one's ever removed this thing since the incident? Nope, Rusty is apparently still in there. The half-life of Weenie World Burgers is at least 20 years. I used to love the game of Twisty until I realized its true sinister purpose. Wait, what the heck is this? I wonder what this key opens. A key? A refrigerator key. It's a padlock key for a refrigerator, for extreme dieters only. Okay. Well, there's a fridge right there. Whoa, better tell Yogi to be on the lookout for these in Jellystone. Uh, ooh, cool axe. I want that. Wait, another key? It's a key to a padlock. Wait, another one? Roof. It's a padlock key. Did someone leave these on? Because they look like they're on. Ow! Yep. Whoa. Ah, uh, poor Why? Rusty. I knew him well. Oh, wait, that's Rusty? Okay, cool. Um, well, use the key. Oh, what the heck is that? The Holy Grail? My God. You know what that is? It's the cup of the carpenter. It's from the Holy Land Toys Collection by Robco. Batteries not included. A $10 value. Refrigerator saved half the population during the nuclear fallout of World War III. Luckily, Grandma Murphy had a commercial grade. Wait, so that's it? That's why we opened the fridge? Looks like someone has already helped themselves to the items behind the counter. Uh, yep. Fool me once, Rubber Spaghetti. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Yep. That's not diet. Okay. Mace is still a common tool for women's self-defense. <laughs> Okay, we cannot do anything with the trash cans to the roof. That leads to Rusty's roof. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. Access. Wait a second. I remember years ago, Rusty once bragged that he had a secret panel installed in the water tower on the roof to hide his smuggled illegal novelty items. I wonder if the Morlock hunters stash their valuables there as well. Well, we have a roof key, so we can try. <laughs> I see they put Rusty's zip line back in place. How convenient. Oh, a zip line. Well, how convenient that we have a zippery do thingy. Whatever it's called. Okay, that's one. Exactly. Only I wouldn't call it a pooch. Oh. <laughs> well, you're dead. Good thing you saved your game. Wait, you did save your game, right? Because there is no way I'm going through all that again. <laughs> okay, cute, cute. Okay, let's actually use the zip redo thingy. Okay, that's one... Dumbass dog. Uh, wait, so there's a panel here somewhere? Oh, here. Oh, no way! A freeze gun? This is definitely your coolest case ever. No pun intended. With freeze guns, the puns are always intended. Are you familiar with the work of Arnold Schwarzenegger? Please, have mercy. I'm afraid my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. <laughs> I'm gonna find a way to turn you off, I swear. You're not sending me to the cooler. Cool. Well, thank you, Deux Machina. Uh, yes, I'm not even gonna 
correct him in his pronunciation there. I don't care. We got an Arnold Schwarzenegger reference in there. I'm happy. <laughs> Okay, we have our freeze gun. Let's get our information, shall we? You got it, didn't you? Yes, I did. The Nitro Stalker freeze gun. So cool. My internet group is going to be so jealous. Um, yes, threat and violence. Fine. But you breathe one word of this, and I'm gonna turn you into a junior fireman popsicle. Oh, fine, fine, okay, I won't say anything. Threatened by Tex Murphy. This is so awesome! Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, the disappointment on his face. Well, at least we got our information. Wait, why would you sit in your car? Go into your office. We may only get one chance, Carlos, so I wanted to go over the plan one more time. If Margaret shows up at the Ritz, call me immediately. If I'm delayed, detain her. We have to assume she won't give up the egg voluntarily, but I want to talk to her first. You know why I've given you the cryo chamber. But that has to be the very last resort. And if anything happens to me, I'll need you to contact a friend of mine. Keep it safe until I retrieve it. Well, it sounds like Mason and Margaret had a major disagreement. I need to locate both of them and get to the bottom of this. I decide to head back to my office to sort things out. Yeah. Hey, cowboy. Any memories coming back yet? Hello Not there. So far, but something tells me I might be missing out on some really good ones. Yep. That's solid detective work. So... Were we... Dating? Dating? Oh, that's so cute. I guess you can call it that. But we were also... Working together in a more professional capacity. Well, now my detective skills are picking up a little sarcasm. Seriously, cowboy. You're good. <laughs> I've learned a lot working with you the past couple weeks. Hmm? Let me get this straight. Uh, you and I were working on a case together. Do you mind telling me about that? Not at all. You wanted a list of tenants here at the Ritz as far back as I could go. Why would I do that? It was your dreams. They were vivid before, but they were getting out of control. It's almost like they were changing you into someone else. You talked about seeing things from the past, but you wouldn't give me details. You're incredibly stressed. It was like you actually believed this apartment was haunted. You even started looking into psychometry. Psycho what? Yeah, yes. Psychometry. It's the belief that an object can contain a person's energy. Okay. So, not only am I an amnesiac, but I'm a paranormal idiot. Yep. Great. Sounds crazy, I know. But then we found out about Donnelly. Who? JT Donnelly. It was the most bizarre thing. I'd heard you mention the name in your sleep. But then, his name turned up when I checked out the previous tenants. So who is this guy? He's a private investigator. A real old school brute. He worked for some powerful, influential people. But then he disappeared around 1943. His last known address was here. San Francisco. No, here. At the Ritz in this exact apartment. Ooh. Okay. That's a little bizarre. Yeah. It gets bizarrier. You call me one night, raving like a lunatic, saying the walls were talking. I rushed over and found holes smashed in the wall, and you curled up on the floor in a ball. Well, I'm glad to hear I haven't changed that much. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't tell me what had happened. But after that, you wouldn't sleep here. That's when you got your new place and started to sleep there. Wait, new place? Hold on. I have another place. Yes, you do. And it's even nicer than here. This is all crazy. Yeah. I think I'm going to sleep here tonight just to see whether 
it affects me in the same way. Need some company? Do you want some company? Yes, please. Listen, Taylor. Mm. I'm beginning to see what the other me saw in you. Mm -hmm. But in my head, it's still 2043. I've got to tell you, there was somebody else. Chelsea, I know. I know how much she meant to you, Tex. Losing her was traumatic as hell for you. But she's gone. And there's nothing you can say or do or don't do that's gonna bring her back. Do you feel that? I sure do. Yes. I'm alive. And that's my heart. It's yours if you want it. She meant her heart, not the other Take thing. Okay. Now, without spoiling anything, this is a decision I'm going to give to you, chat. Because this game has multiple endings. And depending on a few moments where we make some choices in this game, we can get different endings. Beauty says, stay true to Chelsea. Durable says, smash. Obviously. <laughs> Starbunkle says, stay true to Chelsea. Okay, okay. Any other people who want to add their opinion? Because it's now two to one to zero. Tina's also says, stay true. Okay, I guess we're staying true to Chelsea. Sorry, Durable. I'm sorry, Tater, but I love Chelsea. And I never even got the chance to tell her. And if there's any chance that I can find her, I've got to do it. I hope you'd understand. I don't understand, Tex. Why can't you let this go? It's crazy. That room you have across the hall with all our stuff is like some sick Chelsea shrine. I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that. What? I'm gonna go. Oh, uh, you were making a poll. Uh, people already gave their, their idea later, in the chat. The it's fine. Finally letting up. But thank you. Last night felt like a blindside punch to the face. I didn't think having Taylor walking out of my office could be so painful. There's just something reassuring and comfortable about her, but I've got way too many questions, yearnings, and guilt not to find out what happened to Chelsea. Even if it kills me, I've got to know. There's something darker than the night I'm dealing with, and it hinges on what happened that evening seven years ago with her. That was a new kind of famous. As Taylor leaves, she hands me the key to a room at the Ritz. She calls the Chelsea Shrine Room. The Chelsea Shrine Room. We're gonna have a look at that, but we also have a fax. Looks like Archie's back in town. I should check out his three... Yeah. Tax. Drop, drop by three cards to midnight. I got some exciting information about your case. Okay, are we finally gonna meet Archie? Uh, before we do, let's have a look at the Chelsea Shrine. And I think it's the <coughs> I think it's actually this room right here. 2E, yes. Uh well, this is kind of a shrine, all right. Chelsea loved to go to Arizona. I'd like to think I was the only thing keeping her here on Chandler Avenue. It's Chelsea's business card for her newsstand. I didn't have the heart to tell her that print is dead. Yeah, I remember how much Chelsea wanted to go to the Fuchsia Flamingo that night. A reminder of the best and worst night of my life. I'm here to ask you out for dinner and I'm not taking no for an answer. What, like a date? No, it'd be more like two friends having a great meal and maybe some stimulating conversation. 
I guess that'd be okay. I mean, yeah, that, that'd be all right. So what are you in the mood for? You know, I heard Weenie World put tater tots on the menu. I've got a better idea. Why don't you let me make you dinner at my place? It's cheaper than going out. And uh, besides, I have uh, something I'd like to talk to you about. Let's say, uh, 8 o'clock? Well, you talked me into it, Miss Bat, though. Well, I feel so spoiled. By the way, what should I bring, red or white? You better bring both. Ooh! I mean, they are cute together. Also... Ah. I'm wondering how they got these kinds of pictures. Because this was their last meal together, so it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but sure. Yeah, Chelsea always looked great in hats. It's a picture of me and my would-be girlfriend Chelsea Bando. It's funny how fashion cycles circle around. These are all Chelsea's belongings. When the police closed her case, I must have picked up these items from her apartment. I remember this thing was $14.99. Man, I spent an entire three months' salary on a ring for Chelsea. <laughs> CCTV. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing because we stayed true to Chelsea, we got this key. And if we would, like, have gone with Taylor, then... We would not have seen this room, probably, which is kind of cool. That's yeah, cool, cool. I mean, creepy, but cool. Uh, so wait, what were we doing again? We were... Oh yeah, we were going here. Because Archie wants to talk to us. Archie Ellis is my herbal tea loving, source for all things alien supernatural conspiracy theorist. Or he's just plain crazy. He ran into some trouble with the NSA on my last case. Last I knew, he was hiding out in some tropical locale with a bevy of beauties. I'm surprised he's back in town. Fifty Shades of Grey? How you doing? You, you okay? I, I heard you were having some kind of amnesia. You, you know, most alien abductees always have some sort of memory loss. <laughs> um, I don't know, old habits? Are you still into that alien thing, Archie? I mean, isn't that just a little passe? The truth never goes out of style, my friend. Now, I heard something about an injection and a, and a head wound. Yeah. <gasps> Yowza! You really back off, man, because I swear I will shoot the next person who tries to touch this. Okay? <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Ouch. Ooh. So, I guess you do need some catching up then. A few months ago, I moved back here from the islands, and I opened up this place. And I was hoping that you and I could hang out mm. together like old times, but you haven't been around much. Um, history lesson? Yeah. So, did I happen to tell you anything about the case I'm working on? Not yet, but you know I'm always ready to be Robin to your Batman. <laughs> uh, without the homoerotic undertones, of course. Uh, sure. Sorry, Arch, but it's a package deal. If you're going to be in this with me, you're going to have to be in all the way. <laughs> you, you, you had me going there, Murph. <laughs> okay, Boy Wonder, I need you to enter two names into the Bat computer. Mason Bowers, Margaret Leonard. Well, I don't know about Mason Bowers, but Margaret Leonard, she's connected to one of the greatest mysteries of all time. I mean, you know who uh, Nikola Tesla was, right? Nikola. The cop cop? <laughs> Nikola Tesla no. was a genius. Probably one of the greatest geniuses ever. I mean, it was Tesla, not Marconi, who was the true inventor of the radio. 
He invented a, a Tesla coil, the AC electricity, remote control. He even pioneered cryogenics. So are you almost to the part about Margaret Leonard? Exactly. Right. Well, uh, Tesla died in 1943 when the FBI uh, just swooped in and confiscated all his papers and designs. Then in about 2012, all this stuff, the, the Tesla cash just disappeared. <laughs> and you want to know who the number one suspect was? Margaret Leonard. No, an FBI agent named Charles Johansson. Now, I know they could never prove that he did it, but then he quits the FBI and joins some Tesla fanatic group called the Tesla Legacy Society, a group dedicated to making the world better through technology. And that's where he meets Margaret, Margaret Leonard. Bingo! They fall in love, they get married. I think they even had a kid together. So where's Margaret now? Not a clue. Johansson uh, died a couple years later, cancer, I think. And after that, Margaret just dropped out of circulation. So all this happened, what, 30, 37 years ago. I mean, no one's found the Tesla cash since then? It's one of the great mysteries, the lost inventions of Nikola Tesla. What's the big deal with the Tesla inventions? I mean, there must be some reason they were never made. Oh, you ever hear of a little thing called Tunguska? <sighs> Have I ever. Picked up a bad case when I was down in Mexico. Yeah. Where I learned the phrase, Banos, rapidos, andale muchachos, vamonos. Oh, oh Merv, you're too <laughs> funny. In, in 1890s, Tesla conducted an experiment and created a resonance frequency. You know, like a big vibration, and it nearly took out a whole chunk of New York City. And then in the 1900s, he began to work on what he called a teleforce beam. The press called it, you know, a death ray, you know, cooler name. But a few years later in Russia, remote area called Tunguska, something caused an explosion a thousand times greater than the atomic bomb. A thousand times greater than the atomic bomb 40 years before we invented it? But that was the last anyone ever heard of the death ray. Tesla never got funding. Instead, they made him out to be some crackpot and he was broke for the rest of his life. Some people think the plans for it were part of the Tesla cash. Just think how much someone would pay to get their hands on that. Okay. So you're saying that this Margaret Le Margaret Letter has the information about this Tesla cash thing? And I'll never forget what you did tipping me off before that whack job NSA guy could get me. Yeah, that's the fourth game we didn't play. Seems nice. Uh, sure. Uh, Archie? You know me, Murph. Always up for an adventure. As long as I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> you like my shop? <laughs> kind of like my old one, the Cosmic Connection. But I had to change the name in case, you know, the, the NSA and all that. Yeah, sure. Louie? I eat at the brew and stew all the time. Okay. I actually wouldn't mind forgetting a few years of my own life, mostly my teenage years. <laughs> uh, Holly. Yeah. Oh, that's the hollow babe at the Golden Gate. Yeah, Mojo is warm for her form, or lack thereof, as it were. Uh, don't be weird about it. It's fine. He's not very friendly, is he? No, but that's also fine. Uh, Blondie? Gosh, you'd think a sidekick would be a little more helpful, huh? Yeah. Uh, Inspector Bird Barbecue? My little buddy Mojo works over there. <laughs> we hang out a lot, but I can't stay there too long. Something makes my eyeballs burn. Uh, okay. Don't know about that. Okay. Um, JT Donnelly. Donnelly's kind of a mysterious character. He was a private detective Tesla may have hired not long before he died. There's a mention of it in one of Tesla's letters. Okay. You no, know, both aliens and ghosts can communicate through their dreams. It's a proven fact. If you say so, uh, talk to me about Margaret. I've been checking my sources, but no one's heard a thing about her in years. Okay. 
uh, Charles Johansson. He died like 40 years ago and either left the Tesla cash with Margaret Leonard or somebody else, or he took it to the grave. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The Tesla cash is right up there for me. Oh, oh, and the death ray? Well, the name says it all, doesn't it? Okay. As I leave, Archie hands me an old photograph of Margaret Leonard. Maybe someone else on Chandler will recognize her from the picture. Okay. Old lady. I wonder if anyone else on Chandler Avenue has seen Margaret Leonard. Uh, well, let's visit everyone and see. Holly? Hey, Tex. How's your case progressing? Sorry, I don't know a lot of people. Except the ones that come in here. Okay, fair. So she didn't come in here. At least we know that. Um, Clint, are you back yet? Yes, you are. If you were looking for me earlier, I wasn't here. Yeah, no shit. Um, right side. Well, at least you're here more than Nilo used to be. <laughs> and I spend a lot less time in the can. You recognize the woman in this photo? Oh, nice. I think I saw her in a playbook from 1996. Is this your girlfriend? Uh... Well, now, if she were my girlfriend, I wouldn't be trying to figure out who she was now, would I? Sheesh. <laughs> I'm just kidding about this woman being your girlfriend. She's actually mine. No, I'm kidding again. This is Margaret Leonard. She's had a room here at the Ritz forever. She used to live here, but I haven't seen her in years. So, she may not be here anymore, but she auto-pays her rent. So, it's all good. Any chance you can get me into her apartment? <laughs> hmm. Not a chance in hell. I let her install her own security system, just like you, except hers is a real one. I can't tell you which apartment it is, but you won't get in without a passcode or a personal invitation. Maybe I can try to help you with something else. Hmm, we found a door with the bloody handprint. Um, freeze gun. Can't help you with that. Nope, thought as much. All I know about her is she's got a room here. I hardly ever see her, so I don't know when she's here and when she isn't. Okay. Um, the photo? I'll bet she was something back in the day. <laughs> Way back in the day. <laughs> I don't like you. Uh, Rook, talk to me. I've been thinking, Murphy. Uh, perhaps I should confide something to you. Oh, that should be good. That is, you believe the Maldonado is spying on you. But it could have been someone else. Uh, not Margaret Leonard, by any chance. How did you know? Did the words P.I. mean anything to you? <laughs> Margaret may be in grave danger. I, I've tried to contact her, but to no avail. Gosh, if only we knew someone with some detective skills. Do you know how to get into her apartment? No, but she may have left a clue. A clue? Some time ago, she left this in my care. It's, it's for you. For me? She wanted you to have it in case anything happened. Okay. I met Margaret years ago. She was a woman of secrets. Sure. I have an interest in Tesla collectibles, so yes, I've heard of it. And no, I don't know where you could find it. Okay, fair. Um, I met Margaret years ago. She was a woman of secrets. Yeah, you just told me, so okay. Wait, so this book is supposed to help me? Uh, what now? The life of Nikola Tesla? Wait, so we can put numbers in here. What? Um, I doubt we have to put in random numbers. Also, kind of cool that we have a book that we can digitally put numbers in. Okay. Uh, 
Um... Wait, we can still go into the Llama Club. Hold on. We have never even done that. Um, we have a card. Use it. What even is this club? Only the most prestigious people are invited to this club. Oh. Mm, cigarettes. Yummy. Um. The air outside feels thick, like I'm breathing through a pair of dirty gym socks. It's a high radiation day. Most everyone will be staying inside, but I need to hunt for some work. I always like to start the day with the traditional P.I. breakfast. Mmm, <coughs> that hits the spot. Okay, that was a little forced, but fine. The Clean Air Act was abolished after it was ruled irrelevant due to post-World War III fallout. Yeah, I bet some intense smoking competitions take place here. Yeah, a whole lot of smoking and nothing else. Guess we'll look upstairs. Um, what now? Yep, do it again. Uh, okay, not really, not really. No, 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 don't do, don't do it again. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Wait, so is this just here for this stupid cutscene? And that's it? Really? Okay. That's weird, but okay. Um, okay, so wait, hold on. What, what were we doing again? We were asking around... A... Oh, wait, yeah, we have the book. We have the book and we need to find some sort of number combination. Um, but where the heck would we find a solution to that? Louis, help me. Whatever you need, my just ask. Thank you. Um, I know you was having bad dreams way back when, but I didn't hear nothing else about them after, you know, the thing with Chelsea happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. And? Oh, I know this little lady. Haven't seen her around in quite a while, but she used to come in pretty regular. I think she lived at the Ritz. At least for a time. She and Chelsea were real friendly. Hmm. Pretty sure her name wasn't Margaret Leonard, though. At least that ain't the name she told me. Really? So she was using a different name? Still can't believe I'm working with the one and only Tex Murphy. Yeah, yeah, what can yeah. I do for you, sir? Um, Margaret. That's the witch. At least that's what I call her. A couple times I've seen this old lady sneaking around the neighborhood. The witch. Okay. Uh, don't be scared. I just want to ask some questions. Not again. You're going to get me fired. Or worse. Or worse. <laughs> I remember her. Sweet little old lady. Used to see her around the neighborhood years ago. Don't remember the last time I saw her. All right. 
Um, is there anyone else we can ask? Hold on. Don't think so. Um, there's like no facts or anything. Wait, so... The genius of Nikola Tesla. The life of Nikola Tesla. And then we have a 4x4 four four grid with numbers. And if we put in the correct numbers, this is probably going to open up and then we have the card for her room. I guess. But how would we? How would we find a solution? No messages on the bid phone. Do we need to find like a book about Nikola Tesla or something? Like, is there something at the beach house? Oh wait, I cannot even go to the beach house. Okay. Okay. Uh, wait, did we ask you? You know, it used to really piss me off, the way you'd always come around asking your questions, but now that you're paying me for it, I really don't mind. <laughs> okay, uh, no. We already asked you. Can we not ask you? Flashy new neighbor. <clears throat> I mean, clearly this is her room. Yeah, needs a key. Yeah, needs a key. Yeah, a voice key. Uh, wait, so the, this thing is gonna? Guess I better not be too creative because it won't work. Okay, but how would we... Okay, I am a little confused now. Is there like a hint in here? Because... The two of them were close? It doesn't look like it. Wait, is there really nothing else you can tell me about her? You know, Burf, I think we make a great team. What can I do for you? <sighs> That's the most recent photo of Margaret Leonard I could find. Like I said, she's been out of circulation for a while. Yeah, okay, but that doesn't help me. Um, the Tesla cash is right up there for me. Oh, yeah. and the death ray? Well, the name says it all, doesn't it? Yeah, okay, that doesn't help. Any suggestions in the chat about how we figure this out? Again? Really? I don't like this any better than you do. Yeah. Oh, it's all about you, isn't it? What about my feelings? You think this is easy for me? <laughs> um. I have an interest in Tesla collectibles, so yes, I've heard of it. And no, I don't know where you could find it. Okay. So what am I missing? Because she left this book for us. So clearly we would have to find a solution for this. 
But what would that solution be? Like 2050 because that's the year or 2042 or 43 because that's the year we lost our memory. Or is there like an actual order to these numbers or something? Doesn't look like it, but. Wait, this adds up to 15. So one, 10, so five. Four, one plus two, seven, so eight. Nine, two, three, so one. Then this adds up to 15, yeah. Because this also adds up to 15. Okay, so seven, eight, nine, so six. Oh, okay. Okay. Why would Margaret Leonard leave me a key? Well, because she clearly wants us to go into her room or house or apartment, whatever. Um Okay. Uh -oh. That doesn't look good. No, it that chair looks comfortable. Does it? Also, why is this apartment like very long like this? It's a little weird, but Oh, wow. This is a puzzle. Um Yellow, red, blue, and white. Um, it is full yellow. So that's January. Okay, so that's one. Blue. September, so that's nine. So one. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have red and white. So June is six, and I think that's yeah, June six. The red one is six, and then the white one is four for April. It's already at one, so two, three, four. Two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Um, it's a picture of someone named Mantis. Is that it? Mantis. It's a picture of someone named Mantis. Okay. He doesn't look great, though. Uh, what is this? It's a business card for someone named Count St. Germain. Okay. Looks like Margaret Leonard had a video journal. I'll need to find a memory stick to use on the vid player to watch them. Okay, so we're looking for a memory stick. And uh, not at her bed, okay. Was she blind when she picked these out? The old hardy horror. As I walk in the bathroom, I realize there's something wrong here. Something terribly wrong. Are we gonna find a body in here? Okay. So that's the end of that chapter. Day four, 
saints and sinners, or the unusual suspects. Sure. Okay. Well, I think I found Margaret Leonard. Well, most of her. Is that her that, oh, all right, yeah? Is that confirmed? Why is she missing her head? Is there nothing else in here? Okay. Uh, wait, hold on. We were looking for a memory stick. Oh, wait, that's... Uh oh That doesn't look good. That's where the saw blade comes in. Like, she actually got decapitated. Margaret Leonard. Well, most of her. But where would she leave a memory stick? Because we already figured out this thing and we found a picture, not a memory stick. Is there nothing else here? Okay. Oh. Um. Well, hello, boys. Mr. Murphy, you need to come with us if you want to live. <laughs> oh, my God. Just kidding. What was going on in there? You know the drill. Yep. Why do so many people around you end up dead? Hmm. <laughs> um. Inevitable? Well, everybody dies eventually. But not all at once. Did you kill Margaret Leonard? <laughs> um. Magic show. Oh, yeah. And what happened to her head? Let's see. Hmm. Behind my ear, yes. But we keep walking in on you with all these dead bodies. You must be the unluckiest guy in the world. Or the luckiest, because we are actually still alive. Um, search for a motive? Whoever offed Margaret Leonard either hated her guts or was completely bonkers. I mean, why would someone decapitate her? I don't care why, I just want to know who. Wait a second, how do we even know it's Margaret Leonard? I mean, maybe that's why they took the head. Yeah. Yeah, that might have worked a hundred years ago, but now we've got apps for that. We've already got a positive ID. Okay. It's kind of fun, isn't it? I mean, kind of working together, uh, bouncing ideas, sharing information. I mean, what if I said I had some information that might help your investigation? I'd say you were withholding evidence. No, yeah, I said I might have something. No, you said you had something that might help. Yeah, oops. Hmm, 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 Dan, would you seem like a stand-up guy, and I know you don't want any vigilantism, so I'll play it by the book. I think I have video that might have been shot by the guy who killed Margaret Leonard. I'm just gonna hand it to you, and hope you'll cut me some slack. It's on your smart, Alex? Let's have it. Well, he was taking more than just that video. The guy in the video is Mason Bowers. And this is the guy you think was abducted. The problem is there's no evidence of anyone being abducted, so I can't investigate. My hands are tied. Mine, as you see, are not. I may have seen this guy before on some kind of surveillance video. A surveillance video, you say? The video could have shown you in your apartment talking to an elderly lady. There may have been another man there as well, a mutant of some kind, who might have jumped you. The elderly lady, in theory, could have appeared to have injected you when you were restrained. In the ensuing struggle, you might have been knocked out on the fire escape. 
And when would Bowers have shown, hypothetically? Right after you were knocked out, tore through the apartment in pursuit of the old lady. So everything that I've told you matches up, and we're both looking for Mason Bowers. Are you familiar with a program called VCT, Vehicle Compliance Tracking? All cars come with sensors that report when one is out of compliance. For example, when you have your right front headlight shot out. Exactly. If you could access the VCT database, which is illegal and highly inadvisable, you would find a list of all vehicles with the right front headlight shot out. If you could provide more information on the vehicle, you can access an ID and an address from the registration. Any chance this might have been the vehicle seen in the Maldonado surveillance video? I gotta get back to work, Murphy. If you got questions, ask them. And then stop wasting my time with this speculative nonsense. <laughs> fair, fair. Um... I know who Zach Williams is and who his associates are. I'd advise you to keep your distance. Okay. Um, Margaret? Oh, no, Nace is a blondie. Hmm. Don't recognize the face. Sorry. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Talk to me about Margaret. That's Margaret Leonard? I'll have to take your word for it. Okay. Um... The speeder with a broken headlight on the front passenger side? No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, thank you for the information. As soon as I got back from the new San Francisco Police Department, I had an urgent message from Rook. It seems Rook had a soft spot for Margaret and wanted to bring her some justice. He told me he had another interested party in the Tesla cash, a Count St. Germain, who was staying at the Golden Gate Hotel. Maybe he could divulge some answers. One hears a great deal about Tex Murphy on Chandler Avenue. To what do I owe this pleasure? Word is you're a big fan of Nikola Tesla, or at least his stuff. Mm-hmm. Yes. Your local pawn shop has a remarkably extensive offering of Tesla paraphernalia. Certainly the largest cash I've found this side of Belgrade. You mind if I ask what your interest is in Tesla? I gather you're at least somewhat familiar with the story of the Tesla cash? Teeny bit. I believe some of the items Rook has were part of the Tesla cash but he refuses to divulge how he obtained them. I presume from Margaret Leonard, or some third party who got them from her. Oh, shocking. Rook normally would cut off his right arm if he thought somebody would buy it. Hmm. I've spent many years searching for something. My hope is to find a clue as to its whereabouts in Tesla's letters or journals. But the trail has led me here. Tell me, Mr. Murphy, do you know the name J.T. Donnelly? Yeah. I mean, I just heard about it, but he was a P.I. and he lived around here back in the 1940s. At the Ritz? Mm -hmm. In the very room in which you now live. An intriguing connection. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting and uh, maybe a little weird, but yeah. it's, it's not a connection. <laughs> but it's so much more than that. Back in Donnelly's time, there was a man known as the Sleeping Prophet, Edgar Casey. He made a compelling case for the belief that most of us have lived past lives. You're losing me. Yeah. Come now. You've said on more than one occasion that you felt as if you'd been born a century too late. A man out of time, as it were. Tell me. Do you have disturbingly realistic, vivid dreams of another era? Yes. What? You know about my dreams? I must be getting incredibly broad-minded in my old age. So what are you saying? Ah, uh, I was J.T. Donnelly in a former life. Hmm. <laughs> we could explore that possibility, but first, have eggs ever appeared in your dreams? Uh, no, that is not oh, Jack Black. Of course. Uh, poached, over-easy, scrambled, I mean, they're... Certainly nature's wonder food. There are affordable accommodations in better parts of the city. Something could have been drawing you specifically to the Ritz. Don't you agree? Yeah, cheap rent. Yep. <laughs> could you maybe help me out with these memories? Uh, 
Help me interpret these dreams? If you could find this egg, or even put me on its trail again, I have certain techniques, such as regression and channeling, that could help you recall past events. And, I should add, the egg is worth a fortune. Which I would gladly pay. We talk for a few minutes longer, but I tell him I need to get back to the case. This is way beyond my comprehension. Mystical eggs? Mind regression? Past lives? It's boggling. Margaret spoke of an egg being held by a religious fanatic who prays. Was it the Tesla egg I found in the wall at the Ritz? If so, it would have been there for over a hundred years. Does it have some sort of channeling power from the person who possessed it? Well, Mason Bowers is still the key. I need data for the VCT so I can find out who kidnapped him. I better start asking around. And that is what we will Time do. For some good old-fashioned detective work. You should talk to potential witnesses and see if they know anything about the suspicious vehicle involved with the abduction. Yes, but we will do that next time. Uh, yeah, next time. On Dragon Doctor D or whatever. There. Ploppity ploop. Uh, oh, hold on, let me actually shut up the game. There we go. There. So the mystery unfolds. People are dead or getting abducted, and it all has to do with Tesla death ray technology. But in some way, we are connected to all of it, but. We don't know how because we have amnesia. I guess that makes sense. Not really, but sure. <laughs> anyway, that is the first part of Tesla Fact. And we will be continuing this on Sunday. I'm tired. Oh, man, am I tired. Ugh. So, let's do... Ugh, thingies. Tomorrow is Thursday, so we will first have Michael with Super Auto Pets. And then Durable will most likely be streaming some more Dark Souls. Yes, yes. Um, then on Friday we will have to see if Beauty is streaming again or not. Because she is recovering from her surgery. Saturday, probably... Tinas will with more... Draws and chills, I guess? Yeah, beauty probably not durable, planning to. I'll take that. Anyway, then after that on Saturday, uh, no draws and chills, okay. Then only movie night? I guess? Movie night? No idea what we're gonna watch, but we'll see. And like I said, on Sunday, I'll be back with more Tesla effect. There we go. <coughs> okay, let me just find a ray target and close this off because... You reach are not there because one year anniversary. <coughs> Lovey dovey stuff. <coughs> Um, let's see, yes, let's have some fun time and watch Plady be bad at Dark Souls 3. Uh, Raid, Plady, Gami. I mean, he, he's, he's doing his best. I mean, he, he's, like, he's definitely not made for these kinds of games, but it's fine. He... It's fine. 
Anyway. Go over to Plady, say hi, say bye, do all the things, and I will see you all guys all later. Bye-bye.